Right, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that. And without further ado, we will get stuck in to Pantheon at this time. And uh, before we continue, we are unfortunately missing our dear old Yaling this week. So um, I'll DM Fiat some obscure and con uh, very convenient excuse for her absence. Right now, as um, last week, the party encountered a very devious and fearsome foe, unlike many of which they'd ever seen. Uh, a creature that was able to morph its face into their own and use that ability to trick and isolate others so that it could work its nefarious schemes on them as well. Luckily, with some quick thinking, the party managed to um, overpower such a beast, especially with Antigonus's careful and measured use of his orcish resilience, I believe it's called. Relentless Endurance? What was it called, Zach? Yeah, I believe relentless endurance, but Orcus wow. resilience is uh, totally fine. You can just yeah. also call it when Zach was a genius. I okay, yeah, sure. Zach genius level one move. I don't know. <laughs> okay, but yeah. Um, since then, a day has passed, and the party has continued along this trail inland towards Athens. The uh, what is supposed to be the shorter trail towards Athens rather than the coast. As they've traveled on together, they've been treated to several tales of the sea from the sailor, several tales of Egypt from their talkative Yontai companion, who made several attempts to pretend to rob them every time they had a chance, all taken in good favor, I assume. Beyond that, the two women that were with you, they pleasantly stroll along, despite one carefully tending to the careful wound that the doppelganger dealt her in the previous episode. Um, and other than that, the carts have rolled on, but the party has split. With Yarling carefully um, tending to her sister on this route, it was deemed necessary that she go ahead with Aquilus tending his own quarry, his own lost companion. And they have made their way to Athens ahead of the party, picking a pace and skipping asleep, which is where our party took a sleep. They continued on to Athens and the party's lost sight of them going ahead with the companions. So. Um, obviously some pretty hokey d, d stuff, but what we do now is we join the party, including just Kara, Herodotus, Antigonus, and Pruitt on the road towards some large mountains that seem to be coming over the distance. Uh, one other little thing here. You said, does that mean we've taken a long rest since the last I session? You, I was about to ask the same. You can treat yourselves as having a long rest. Indeed you can. Yeah. Just take in mind that. Oh, oh goody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So one last thing that would have happened is that uh, Antigonus would have cast Gentle Repose, having remembered that he learned that spell, um, on, uh, Yal on on Larkin's body so that um, she didn't start to stink. Very well, yes. Uh, how does a Gentle Repose look from a cleric? <laughs> well, I would have taken uh, some of the clothing that we uh, found in the cave and gently wrapped it around her body. And as I'm doing it, I will seal it with some clay every time I do another layer of it. And that clay is magical. And as I say a little prayer to Prometheus, um, some of the impurities of her corpse are drawn away. Sure thing. Yeah, sort of a uh, magical mummification. You could, yes, also, exactly. you could assume it to be, but let's hope she doesn't come back as a mummy. I'm just writing that down. Hang on for a few sessions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, yeah, can return as a mummy lord. Right. Okay. Um, so with that, yeah, um, you guys are making your way down a very lonesome road now, a very dusty track. At either side of you, you see dead trees. Um, this sort of dust is blowing with a subtle breeze across the road ahead. You don't see anything up ahead, but you can hear something in the distance, something you can't quite place. Um, who's got the highest passive perception? Oh my. Mine's uh, a 13. <clears throat> 13. 12 for me. No, 14 for me. What? Mm. 15. 14. Okay, Kara, you can just about hear the sounds of shouting somewhere far off, but the day is so still, only the gentle breeze allows you to hear these words on the wind. What they say, however, is unintelligible. I I think we might be approaching some people. I'm not sure. It sounds like some kind of commotion up ahead. Does anyone else hear that? Now that she's pointed it out, can we pick up on it? or uh, Make me a perception check. All of us or? Whoever like to perk their ears up due to what Kara has alerted you to. I, four, 14. 
The streak continues. Nine. <laughs> yeah. Kara, yeah. you're looking at blank faces as around you, the rest of the pyres does not seem to hear anything but the gentle breeze. Perhaps it's all too much for Kara and she's finally gone mad. Uh, would you like me to send my bird? Yes, yes, that's a great idea, Herodotus. That would be lovely. I don't know where he is. And as you say that, he's perched on your shoulder. It's like a guy who's put his glasses on looking for his glasses. You're going to give me a heart attack. I'm right here, you old fool. Uh, Herodotus is on your shoulder. (laughs) Oh, yes, I noticed. Um, Can you go and have a look? There's some noise up front. Uh, Yes, which, which direction? I, I, I the heard them that way. Do you need some help take it off? Uh, I'll be fine. And indeed, uh, sticking to his pride, obviously doing to his detriment as he kicks off you like a, like a jet going over a cliff. And it's only by spreading his wings he manages to glide upwards. And How many vertebrae do I break like... when he tries to take <laughs> off? This owl that's almost as ancient as you fortunately does not cause your spine to rupture. But it does manage to take a... <laughs> into the sky um so you're looking through his eyes i assume or you're yeah running... i obviously um am i on one of the carts i'm assuming i assume you guys kept your horses actually mm-hmm. i'm not sure we did yeah, yeah okay. we have our horses so you can um... only assume yourselves to be on horseback the cart's gone ahead with aquilus uh, who's using it to transport the pythia uh, at this point then herodotus would be laying on his belly like grasping the horse so he doesn't <laughs> fall off sure as the owl takes off, you watch Herodotus slump forward as though you're not sure if he's dead or he's doing the owl thing. You can safely assume, though, as the owl takes off, um, Herodotus seeing through its eyes, um, you look over a collection of what looks to be dead trees, but it, didn't t- it turns out they're just a different type that you don't recognize, and they don't have the evergreen bloom that a lot of trees that you know do, but um, they are seemingly alive. Um, it's only after about a minute or so of uh, I'm saying he's right, Pherecides? Palamedes, sorry. Palamedes sort of (laughs) hovering around, going in different directions that um, he does indeed spot something. And um, what he spots is strange to him, and it seems to be growing. It seems to be some kind of moving object, but it also seems to be flying. And it's getting closer and closer to him. And as you watch Palamedes in the sky hovering and looking down at this thing, the rest of you will see taking off into the air a giant creature, some sort of, seems to be some sort of large cat but with wings and a horrifying, almost human face. As it passes Palamedes, it just flies straight past him as though it matters not at all to this creature that the owl is watching and almost knocks Palamedes straight out of the air. And as this thing gets higher and higher, you can hear it, you can see in its claws, in its talons, it almost looks like, in its front talons, but maybe back lion paws, you see a man struggling, screaming for help. No, 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 get me down, get me down! And he just takes off higher and higher. You see the man dressed in Athenian armor. And as he does, you see a scatter of arrows follow the creature into the sky, but it's getting higher with every passing second until it's over you. Does anyone of you wish to be doing anything? How far away is it? It's about 50 feet up. Okay. Um, I guess, you know, using whatever math we need, how f- how far by bow shot? <laughs> oh, right. Well, <laughs> but I guess. Um, I, uh, okay, I see, I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> about 80. Can we say 80 feet? 80 feet. I'd say 80 oh, feet. Oh, wonderful. 80, Close 80, range. Look at 85 that. 85 feet. 85 <laughs> feet away. <laughs> well, okay, well, Ray will, will have his horse go five feet forward. Okay. Sure. And shoot. Hey, you can do it. <laughs> All right, sure. So you're firing. Um, just go ahead and roll me an attack roll um, yeah, okay. on this thing as it takes up into the sky. Oh, my goodness. And I will also shoot a sick ah, Nine. <laughs> nine. I'm yeah. rolling is so crappy. <laughs> Your arrow does not just re- it does not re- the out- reach the altitude necessary to reach it. You may have got it on target, but not at all enough power behind that shot as it just sort of clatters into the ground ahead of you. Prey continues just to ride forward to get closer. Sure and Antigonus moves towards it as well, rubs his fingers together to make some friction, and throws a sacred flame at it. At right, it's 60 feet away. Yeah, all right. Um, that's a saving throw for me, right? Yes, dexterity right. saving throw. Um, let's see. Where have I put this thing's thingy? Mm-hmm. Just a second. Someone keep touching yeah. their mic. Mm, not sure. But uh, dexterity, did you say? 
Yep. Dexterity, 14, yeah. All right, so it got a 12. So go ahead and roll damage. It takes full damage from this. Six fire, six radiant damage. Six radiant damage, yeah. So um, as this sort of grease at green fire, yeah? Yes, of course, always. Green, yeah, okay, green fire just shoots out into the sky like a guided missile. This thing just sort of tries to dodge and weaves. It sees it growing in the, in the air, coming towards it, but it does catch its side, one of its wings, um, which gives the time for the other arrows to start hitting it as it flies away. Arrows that you can't see where they come from, but it lets out a sort of a colossal... <laughs> and it lets the man go from 50 feet up in the air. It releases its talons, and the man just sort of that starts twirling in the air, his legs and his head taking turns to be How upright as he far spins is he away from down me? and down and down. Um, he's about 30 feet ahead of you. I uh, I cast Feather Forward him. All <laughs> oh, right. Feather oh, forward. Yeah. Yeah. he'll snap That's out well. and then, like, sure. point him and... Absolutely. So this man who's covered in scars and bleeding, you can see the blood spraying around as his body just keeps gaining momentum as he spins and he spins and he spins. He finally reaches about 10 foot towards the ground and he almost stops dead, but he actually has to slow down a great deal until he starts turning like a slow moving dial as he continues to get towards the ground and he lands softly, but does not does not get up as the creature sort of rears round in the sky, starting to hover around, looking down for the source of the arrows and it dies down in their direction. And you can hear shouting voices just like, don't give in, keep firing. Oh, and that doesn't look it. good. Yeah, gallop, gallop, gallop towards it. Okay, you're gonna cling towards it. Yep, this um the guy's left on the road for that for the time being. Um, in which case, let me put you guys on a map. A uh, little map for you guys. Just got a little map for you guys here. Nothing too cool, but <laughs> if you go all that time. Tell me if everyone can right. see and if anyone I can see. not see is more important. Yes. Um and let's put on some music because you can't have a manticore fight without a little music. That... A manticore, Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this thing lands with a with a crater. It sort of skids to a stop, planting its huge paws into the ground and leaving a long, long trail where four paws have just scooped up mounds of dirt. It looks around with this horrible caricature of a human face, but it's bigger and it's wider than it should be, and it looks horrific. If you imagine Uncanny Valley taken to the extreme, as this thing's wide grin filled with sharp teeth looks from one of the hot lights beginning to surround it to the other as though they're prey waiting to be toyed with and at this point i think i'd like everyone to roll me initiative if you can um in well tony if not i can add you no props mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'll roll for the uh, manticore oh great initiative. and i'm rolling for my hoplites too are they are they dressed as full hoplites with a, mm -hmm. a dory spear and everything uh, no, they seem to be dressed more for one-on-one -on -one combat rather than regimental combat. I'm clicking on initiative, but it's not rolling. That's okay. If you go to, if you want to roll a die, so just roll a one d. Yeah. I can see well, it. You go, you've done it now. <clears throat> yeah, I can add you random uh, manually to oh. the order. You oh, rolled it five hundred times. <laughs> what the? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, th uh sixteen. <laughs> What you do is what you're going to pick the best one out of all of them. It was eight. <laughs> uh, right, yeah, I can see it now. You've got a load. I'll, if, you, if the 16's the one you see, I'll give you the 16. No problem. No, no, I rolled no. a five. I rolled five. about oh, five oh, twenty. I, I rolled physically, like I didn't. <laughs> okay. Oh, it was rolling. Okay. Oops. <laughs> I cannot see the names on my initiative order. So it goes Carl Manticore. Who got the 11? That was you. That was my hoplite then, yeah. I guess my hoplite. <laughs> and then Herodotus. Then... Um, I've named my character. Kara. Oh, did mine not click through? I thought it did. Um, I can't see what... Yeah, you, you have a five as well, five. Zach. So that's five, three people oh. with five. So yes. if you guys want, you can go with as it is, or you can divvy up by dexterity score. Your choice. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll... Yeah, we can. I can go last. That's fine. Okay, cool. They appreciate that for the sake of time. Yep, sure, cool. Right, so it begins, Carl, um, as you, Pruitt, you ride along and your horse almost rears up with fear approaching this thing because it knows it stands no chance one-on-one -on -one versus this creature. And the creature indeed turns a look that would turn it to stone with fear 
I shouldn't use that analogy in ancient Greece because it's not <laughs> what you think. Right. right. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, imagine your horse just rearing up with, um, with you know, a horror and letting out a sound, a whinny that you, um, you've never heard it make before, before it tries to turn and run. Um, okay. You can try and make an animal handling check if you want to try and stop it from turning yeah. and run. R real quick before I do, uh, how armed do the men firing at this thing look? Or can I even see them? They're fully armored, and they seem to be armed with um, shields and spears, and perhaps a few javelins as well. Okay, so they look pretty. Okay, they look pretty professional. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. I'll. I, I'm. Ah, oh, man. I don't want the horse to run away. Um. Yeah. I'll try making an animal handling check. Will that take an action to do so? No. No. This is a free action. Cool. Okay, 10 plus stuff, um, 12. 12, okay, yeah, uh, it's it's clunky. It, the horse is stomping, it's rearing up, it's throwing its four, four hooves in the air and just letting out horrible, <laughs> like trying desperately to turn, but you stable it. After a few seconds, you manage to get your horse under control, but it will go no closer. Okay. Uh, it will go no closer. Do I have a clear shot from where I am? Or that's is there? So. Yeah, that's okay. fine, yeah. Cool. I'll shout to the armored men, uh, get in close so it doesn't run away, and they'll fire. All right. Let's see that attack roll. That's an at one. That's an at one. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> my rolls have been so bad. Oh, my God. Time. Right. <laughs> you Fair need to get enough. rid of those dice. <sighs> Apparently, they roll right. well when I'm DMing my. Oh, anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> roll well for monsters, not for characters. Yeah. It'd be so much better if we had a sponsor yeah. giving us dice. That would be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As you um, as you give out these orders, very sort of full of authoritarian tones and telling these people good tactics, it's a bit of a, a con like a contrasting scene when you lose, draw your own arrow and you do the thing where you let it loose, but the arrow doesn't catch and it just sort of tangles. And then, yeah, well done. <laughs> you, 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 didn't even I imagine the horse had something to do with it, so I'm going to blame it on the horse. <laughs> you can blame it on the horse all you wish. That is your prerogative as a player. It's wrong, <laughs> but you can play it. <laughs> okay. Does that end your turn? Yep. All right, so uh, that brings it round to the Manticore, who is going to go straight for this hot flight here. And he's going to make a, a multi-attack. The one with its uh, bite. Hmm. A 24 is a hit. Bye -bye. For four piercing. Oh, and um, two of the scores, uh, an eight and a 15. Uh, I think a 15 is a hit, yeah. So 10 damage he takes. So the uh, Manticore comes over, it sinks its teeth in first to keep him in place, but then it just brings its claw up and drags it in a perfect vertical way down his chest. You can, see, you can hear the tear in the metal under this thing's colossal claws as it touches skin, and this guy just screams in pain. Um, but that ends the Manticore's turn. That's all it can do. Uh, which brings it round to the Hoplites, who are going to move in with their pack tactics and all strike <laughs> um, their spears. Ooh. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> about oh, that, right? My goodness. These guys aren't bad. <laughs> yeah, so they all sort of they reassume a formation they're more familiar with as they bunch together and form a shield wall with these huge round shields and they bounce their spear over the tops and they start thrusting it in where the manticore is vulnerable and they do a combined 17 damage not bad at all uh, all right that ends their turn so we're brought around to herodotus uh herodotus will be like oh like calm on his horse and and then sort of like um Cartel will just cast Mage Armor on himself, I think, <laughs> to stay yeah. where he is. Sure. And um, while I'm thinking about this, all right, just go ahead and take a point of inspiration because I didn't expect anyone. I literally ripped that other art by off for dead, but you managed to save him. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I completely wrote him off for dead, but okay, cool. Uh, first yeah. ever one. <laughs> nice one there, yeah. So um, Mage Armor, that's your action. Yes. It's very Which well. gives go me ahead. temporary hit points. Increase your hit points accordingly, <laughs> absolutely. So, uh, Kara, it's your turn. As this creature, uh, even with your vast experience of animals, just does not seem familiar to you. Is he still on the ground? Yep, he's pouring around, sort of reeling back, letting out a disturbingly human scream from these spears. Okay. Um, Kara, I'm just going to stay where I am and just take my hands like this and bring them together and kind of mutter a few words under my breath. And as I do, I'm going to cast Entangle 
kind of I'm aiming just behind him so that I don't get that row of hoplites and gotcha. try to just get him. So that's going to be a strength saving throw. So it's 20 feet, right? Yes, a 20 uh, foot square. Is that accurate? Uh, down a little bit more. So he's kind of in the middle. A little bit, yeah. Like one row down. There we go. Strength saving throw from me as it sort of sees these things begin to emerge from the ground, these roots. Yeah, they're going to kind of like mirror my finger mm -hmm. movements. It's okay. almost like I'm like moving them. That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, um, making a complete copy of the, as you say, movements of your fingers, they start to wrap around and they take on the form of hands that begin to drag him to the earth and his paws even sink a bit into the soil itself. But uh, yeah, he is, um, I think, restrained. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, okay, cool. All attacks against him have advantage and he has nice. his advantage. So good job there. Uh, does that end your turn? Um, yes, it does. Cool. So we're brought around now to Antigonus. You're muted. Oh, oh, I see. Sorry, it was on the mic. <laughs> no uh, and he just reaches into his bag for his uh, little clay claw, and then seeing the entangle, puts it back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and instead, he reaches in for a, a clay figure of a small uh, vulture, and I throw it up into the sky and cast Spiritual Weapon, and suddenly uh -huh. a vulture appears above it and dives straight for the manacore. So your um, your spiritual weapon takes the form of a vulture, huh? That's correct. And lo and behold, <laughs> I have a vulture token ready. <laughs> so oh, yeah! I love that, huh? Um, uh -huh, uh -huh. Let, me, let me put this to be controlled by you, Antigonus. Excellent. All right, so go ahead and roll with advantage your spiritual weapon. Uh -huh. That's legit. Ooh, that was in that one, but this one is a 17 plus... Uh, six is a 23. That yeah. will certainly do it. Yeah. Awesome. And he takes, uh, six force damage. Six force damage. Very nice. Yeah. Yes. It does not expect an attack from above. A manticore with wings this size, surely the apex predator of the skies. But, however, a vulture does swing down and claw at it with its sharp talons, dragging them through its back and drawing out blood, doing six mm -hmm. force damage. It makes sense. Or would it just make it... I it's up to you. You can call it piercing damage. if you want. I'm just, I've just reskinned it. Yeah. As far as me, force damage is just true damage. So like it just yes. means, you know. But whatever. And, All right. So uh, that is a that's a bonus action. So can I still use a cantrip? I can't remember the rules. Yes, you can. Uh, you can do. All indeed. right. So then, seeing my my lovely spirit dive in, I also rub my hands together and use the friction to cast another sacred flame. Lovely. Yes. Dexterity saving throw for my my beautiful manticore boy, who gets a sixteen. He succeeds. He is one dexterous boy, so yeah. Yes. Uh, so he takes half damage. Uh, he will take three damage then. Three damage, yeah. Does not expect uh, this. I don't think it's any damage. Sacred Flame's half damage, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't say half one to save. It doesn't It doesn't say really? that. For, for cantrips, you never take half damage if you I always thought that Sacred Flame was the um, thing to that. But yeah, okay, fair enough. Absolutely. <clears throat> Wrong. And I will. All right. I have something to and rip into my, gonna... oh, my DM in with next time. So. <laughs> Position myself between uh, Herodotus and the Manticore, and that's my turn. Uh, yeah, okay, you've already moved that. That's fine, cool. Yeah. Um, every time this Manticore tries to react to something, something else hits it. So it's Vulture, it's Spear, it's um, it's Roots, it's um, it's your Flame. But yeah, it brings it down to um, through its turn. It's done for it. Yeah, I'm done with this horse. i uh, going to jump off. Five, <laughs> ten. Uh, are we doing diagonal movement counting as more? Five feet only. No worries. Though. Okay, 15, 20, 25. Bonus action, dash. Get up there. I'll yell out, I have the left flank, and I will go at him with my magical uh, gladius. Very well. Um, yeah. So, as you say Finally. this, you got, you got something? <laughs> Finally, a 10. A double-digit yeah. number. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, 23 to hit. <laughs> 23 hits him, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, sneak attack. Or no, 20, 24, because it's magical. I forgot. Wow, wow. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Cool. Uh, so sneak attack. Yeah, it's pretty good. There we go. Yeah, so... Uh, 18 piercing damage. 18 piercing damage. That is amazing. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, 
yeah, doing a colossal hit. It's things rearing back from the fire. It tries to pour the vulture, leaving its soft underbelly exposed. Yeah, and I just run up, kind of skirt around the last hoplite there, and even like just fully stretch out my body just to to uh, to bury my sword in its in its un exposed underbelly. Absolutely, yeah. Like Perseus slaying the Gorgon, you sink your sword true, and um, it's sick. Perseus didn't kill Sabbath, but you know, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> well, then quickly draw it out and back, uh, get yeah, back so, next to the hoplites. And um, a spurt of blood covers you, um, pro it just splashes against you as you take a step back. The hoplite to your right, looking down at you and saying, Oh, a hit well struck. Who are hey. you? <laughs> Prelate Romain. Very well, let's dispatch the beast. We'll have time later. <laughs> It's end your turn there for a <laughs> Yeah, it. Um, do these guys look Roman out of curiosity? No, they do not. Okay, yeah, just making sure. <laughs> All right, um, so it's the Manticore's turn, and um, taking off would be too dangerous at this moment in time. So it's going to go for the uh, hot flight that it initially damaged, I think, with this one. With a 20, which is a 7. Uh, biting into this guy, uh, he m tries to raise his shield, but it's knocked aside by the thing's meaty, meaty head. This sort of huge, like almost thick, thick skull just knocks it through, and he fr is thrown back, leaving his body exposed. And the thing leans in and takes a t almost too quick to see bite of his neck and rips outwards. And you just see a giant spurt of blood as the man falls forward. D Ed as a doornail, unfortunately, this fella. But it still has an attack on the guy next to it, who it's going to do two claw attacks as it sort of tries to swap the guy in two. But only one of them hits for nine slashing, though. Not bad at all. Mm. Yeah, these hot flights beginning to lose their fervor. They only look like young boys, really. Um, they're not the seasoned soldiers you expect from hot flights, and it's becoming more and more apparent as their knees begin to shake and their shields begin to drop and their skin begins to sweat in the sight of this horrible beast. Uh, but it is their turn, and they're going to steal themselves and attempt to carry on with the spearing. It's a 21 and a 17 with the pack tactics, and true enough, they do manage to do some damage to it, despite how terrified they truly are. Bring it down to this health. All right, so that ends the hot flight's turn. Aronis, it's your turn. Oh, this is not good. He puts his staff on the floor, like, so it's, it's facing upwards and starts... You know, like where he like, tries to like start a fire and he's trying to get some static and then like he tries to like mold it up the staff and then sort of some lightning sort of pops out and sort of arcs over and it comes back, back well, tries to come back down on it. All right, sure. Is that a, yeah, a lightning bolt? Jolt. Or... Lightning jolt, yeah. Uh, oh, I rolled a 13 and a 20. So does a 20 do anything for a spell? He's restrained um, and it is a spell attack, right? Yeah, but does a 20 do anything for a spell? Oh, yeah, I mean, you'll... Yeah, it's still crit. It is still a crit. Yeah, okay, well, yeah, I rolled it. Obviously, it's a van I've got advantage, haven't I, yeah? Yeah, you've got advantage, yeah. yeah. so 13 and a 20, so 20. So it's, it's double damage on double a, damage, a yeah. jolt, yeah? Yeah, 2d10. Do I double it or just roll 2d10? Uh, I like to roll 2d10, usually. 6 and a 5, 11 damage. 11 damage, yeah. Um, this thing, it's, it's thick hide. Just, it cannot... It's not impervious to this amount of electricity you're starting to pump out of this staff. And there is a moment where it's connected to your staff by a singularly... Well, you have to hold on to it. Ah! Yeah, and this thing is just getting zapped and it's letting out horrendous noises that even itself it did not know it could make. Um, does that end your turn, Herodotus? Uh, yeah. All right. Um, then, Kara, it is your turn. Okay, um, I'm going to continue to stay where I am. I'll close my eyes and say a quiet prayer under my breath to Sir Nunos, protect these soldiers in this battle. And then out loud, I'll say, take heart soldiers, the spirit of the bear is with you and put my hand out and I'm gonna cast my bear spirit totem uh -huh. behind hmm. the row of hoplites. Okay, very cool. Let's see if I have a, a bear spirit totem uh, in my Roll 20 here. Um, Bear with us now, guys. Okay. <laughs> That's terrible. Well, we pause. <laughs> here we go. I have one I have one bear that I have uploaded. Forgive me if it's not the most good-looking bear. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> let me put him on here. Can you see it? 
Yeah. Okay, there you go. So yeah, one it's not the, not, the, not, the, not the healthiest looking bear, but there you go. <laughs> so that's your best. Spirit. And I think they get how many hit points? Temporary hit Eight points? temporary hit points. That's pretty good. That's actually very good. Now it extends oh. to all party members as well, right? Um, it's, let's see, it's, I think it's only in a 30 foot radius aura from the, where I cast the bear. That's still exceptionally good. So everyone gets yeah. it, including yourself. Um, but okay, it's unfortunately too late for our good friend North Hoplite here. Um, but yeah, that's very cool. Does that end your turn? Yeah, it does. All right. So Antigonus, your turn. Uh, I will first, uh, seeing the vulnerability, tell my spiritual weapon to peck its liver again. All right, sure. Uh, let's see that damage. What with the damage? Uh, attacking. Ooh, that's terrible. Four plus six is ten. Uh, and your advantage roll? That was the advantage. <laughs> <It> was <terrible. laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay, yeah, absolutely. Um, this thing's co- pretty savvy to this spiritual weapon by this point, and it manages to shield the peck with one of its wings, tearing through that cartilage-like lining of the wing, but doing no damage to its body. Uh, that's frustrating. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Help me out here, and I scrape my mace across my shield and shoot Guiding Bolt at it with my action. Right, okay, go ahead. Roll with advantage on your spell attack. Uh, better, 16? Uh, 16 will hit it, yeah. Nice, just level 1, so 46. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four. Uh, six, seven, eight damage. Eight damage. Uh, go ahead and explain plus, to me yeah. how this thing meets Hades. Even if oh, that is, nice. that is where monsters go, but this thing's <laughs> something. I want you to tell me how it gets huh. them. Yeah. So as I scrape the mace across the shield, the sparks congeal to a crackling uh, green bolt, and it smothers the monster as it cackles all around its mane, and it can't mm-hmm. breathe, it can't see. It is ash. That's amazingly cool. Yeah, there is a moment where it is swinging its head left and right, its whole mane on fire, and you can see it circling a human face that seems to be getting smaller and smaller as the flames spread across it, and see it see its jaw just go yaw wide as it lets out one final <laughs> with a terribly, almost horrible mimicking of a human cry, but it does indeed collapse to the ground as the flames take over it fully, and eventually, as you say, it is no more than ash. Mm. I, uh, my vulture turns back into a clay statue. I run up and collect it and smear the clay on the fallen hoplite to try to cure wounds. Uh, unfortunately, a NPC cannot be cured wounds in this fashion, so yeah. Ah, okay. uh, unfortunately, he'd need something like a revivify. Um, but Got yeah, it. you, uh, you okay. do try at least, and the what soldiers watching take note of this and look down at you with your clay. Um, but one kneels down next to his fallen calm and places a hand on his chest and says you do all you can but i think he's gone mm. i think we best report back to the commander who, who are you people where did you come from first question are there any other enemies about no no we've been we've been chasing this from for days now we didn't expect to be able to catch it if we had we'd have brought more men but it seems to have noticed when we were at our weakest a scouting was, party. You were scouts then? Indeed. We didn't expect to have to fight it alone, but with your help, we've achieved a great deed. There'll be many tales of this in Athens. I, I must know who you are. What's your name, sir? Antigonus? Are you speaking to me or speaking to the man talking? <laughs> <laughs> to all of you. All of you deserve to share in this great feat. Sure. Um, Antigonus, he got it right, yes. Aye, we come from Eritrea. We've seen worse things than this, unfortunately. Ah, how fair, how fair is the coast of the city? And the city has fallen. I, uh, uh, fallen? Fallen to who? That's, we're not at war with anyone. It seems that you may be at war with beings that have already gone, taking the corpse of your fellow friend here and reanimating it, using it to sack the city. He understands some of these words, but not all. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> He's just following you. It seems to trail off. But yeah, there's more pressing matters. He just nod his head and says, uh, this sounds like words for the commander. Um, we are headed to Athens to report of this army of dead people. Uh, we would appreciate the support from uh, your commander. Uh, you are to be commended for keeping ranks despite the fight going poorly. I am only a month old hoplite, my friends, but... 
We are taught well, and we are told to remember our training. If all is lost, then we band together, and it seems to have worked for most of us, that is. And he looks down to his two fallen comrades. You can see that. Is the other one actually dead? Oh, he's dead, yeah. Oh, the one um, I feather fooled. Oh, sorry, he's not actually here. Like, he's left uh, oh, sort of okay. far away, but you consider him to be stabilized, um, unconscious. Um, the man looks to you, says, um, each of you, and he says, his name is, uh, my name is Erebus. I've been a hot light only a month, but I, I can't say that this is my victory. You should all be commended. We would have died if not for you, such as our trees over there and my friend here. They both fell to this beast before you arrived. I walk oh. up to the beast. Oh, what is it? And I'm going to have a look at it and see if I can recall what it is. Um, I mean nature. A nature? Oh, natural one. Oh. It's, it's uh, some kind of a large cat. It's, oh, uh, it's definitely feline, yes. <laughs> Very difficult to tell with the amount of ash that covers its corpse. It seems to be a little more now than charred bones. Mm. Uh, I'll try as well. Sure thing, yeah. Nice! 27! Yay! Very, very well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you can recall accurately the fight itself. In sort of an eidetic memory sort of way. You took a mental picture of this creature as you're fighting it. And you know it to be somewhat tale of um, a manticore, but it doesn't seem at all big enough to be the manticore that you've heard of a tale. Perhaps some kind of offspring that's found its way to northern Greece. Uh, yeah, and is... Uh, any indication of why it would be here or if do they are they is the original manticore anywhere near here like um i'll say with a 20 you know what it is but it's purely from your knowledge you wouldn't know the general habitats and styles of life of a manticore itself but according to tales of the original manticore no it's quite far from home okay why were you pursuing this beast? Obviously, it is dangerous. Uh, did it attack? The... Uh, well, our Stratagos in Athens, he sent us with a mission to hunt this creature down. It's been causing some ruckus on the roads recently. And, um, well, our commander's out here. We have two tasks, and we can consider at least the first achieved, if not for the heavy losses we've paid. Oh, did your commander not like you very much, then? We never expected to find it so easily. Not today. We've seen it flying around, but it seemed to have noticed we were in shorter number and taken the opportunity to attack. And had you not been here, it would have been very wise to do so. Well, we feel blessed and lucky to have met you as well. I do hope the rest of your day fares better than this. No, my friend, you must accompany us back to camp. The commander, he would so much love to meet you and you deserve reward for your efforts. Where is camp? It's just along the road. There's... And he's pointing the direction that we're already going, I yeah, assume. Exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah. He's pointing the direction you guys are already going. And um, as he's going, this guy's going to go ahead and go and pick up his friend who's just stabilized on the road over here. Antigonus, if we are to warn Athens, we could use a letter of recommendation from this commander. Not the worst idea, sure. The commander um, is a fair I, man. Yeah, I, he will... Sorry, go ahead. I was just asking, Do I start... am I starting to notice the area that we're in? Does it look familiar to me at all? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, no need, no role necessary. You've been in this area many times. You are at the foothills, okay. uh, what will lead into the mountains of you know where that is. Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah. Sure. So, yeah, then I'll amend it and say um, a, a short time. Yes. I have somewhere else we potentially need to be by nightfall, if possible. Very well. It shouldn't take long. Uh, the commander is a fair man. He's very just. Uh, he will see you rewarded. I'm sure he looks forward to meeting each and every one of you. Um, please, please follow us. Um, and he'll go and help his friend along. Um, him, he'll say to you, if you wouldn't mind, you look quite capable and you have horses. If it's not too much to ask, we have two soldiers who've given their lives. Would you escort them back to the camp? Of course. Thank you. The, the commander will be most pleased. I bring over donkey and <laughs> try to strap in uh, sure, my yeah. little feeble horse. <laughs> yeah, your stubby leg, that horrible little malformed horse, manages to bear the weight. As nice. you sling the hop light across the back and secure it, yeah, it's easy enough to do. Um, but yeah. You guys I'll bring my horse over as well for the other one. 
All right. And Kara, as you do, make a perception check. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. As you get closer, you'll see that the hot flight who's been talking is just staring at you, like wide-eyed. Yes. Uh, uh, well, um, it's a lovely day. <laughs> it, it is. Yes. Yes. Uh, look, we should make to camp quickly, and uh, he'll just rush off ahead, sort of scooting on ahead. And Tigness, would you help me get this other? Hop light onto my horse, please. Of, of course, yes. Uh, Prue will go after the one that fell out of the sky and help get him on his horse. Sure. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Yeah, that guy is alive still, but yeah, he is. Uh, he's knocked out. Sure. Um, yeah. All right. So, go ahead. Well, last it. thing before we leave, I'd love to just kind of see if any of the body of the manticore has anything else in there. Any any goodies? Yeah. Oh, I was going to say I was going to go and look for uh, if anything was used for components or anything. Yeah. Just Due to the nature of the description of how the manticore died, I will say that there is little <laughs> remaining of what was this colossal. We call that a flavor fail. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I feel bad because I'm kind of punishing you for flavoring it coolly. Uh, now go ahead and make a high DC investigation. Whoever's trying. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I will as well. I'll allow the I'll allow the chance. Investigation plus. Unless I spurn my players for being descriptive. <laughs> Eleven. Plus uh, uh, 115. Not quite again. But yeah, um, yeah. you just dig through what seems to be ash and you put your hand in what seems to be like sticky um, burned flesh, but um, you don't find anything of use. Well, from now on, maybe I shouldn't deal the killing, killing blows. <laughs> <laughs> At least maybe not with fire. <laughs> That's, you know. Oh, I don't right. care how he dies. Uh, well. At this point, Prua comes back out of the woods with the, the unconscious guy on the horse. Mm. Herodotes, you ought to be congratulated. You saved one. <laughs> oh, did I? Oh, that's good. Yes. Very well. Just make sure we do not fly too close to the sun next time, I, I think. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Prua will... <laughs> Icarus reference in contemporary ancient Greece. Yeah. <laughs> Icarus is a stretch. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'll take some negative inspiration. No, I won't because I've already been rolling crappy for the past. You know. <laughs> anyway, uh, Pruitt will, on the way, uh, he's going to want to ride with uh, these hoplites. Um, compliment them for not running away. Uh, honest compliment there. And uh, ask them about <laughs> what army they're from, what experience they have, and just small talk. Sure thing. Yeah. Um, they say, well, as you small talk with them, they'll, they'll commend you back and say, we saw you rush around to the flank. You, you trained before as part of part of a phalanx? Or? Uh, yes. Uh, not a phalanx per se, but uh, it was part of a formation, yes. I was the uh, auxiliary uh, cohort of the Roman Legion, the Ninth Legion. Yeah. And they look at the four pop lights will look at each other and give a sort of a wiggly hour browed look of admiration and say, Roman Legion. We've heard tales of their discipline on the battlefield. It's a real honor to meet you. Oh, I'm afraid as Greeks, we're still clinging to the old ways, but I'm, I'm sure you have much to teach us. Oh. Well, the old ways are effective to a point. The fact that you did not run away is uh, a prime hoplite tactic. Uh, what Rome excels in is strategy and positioning, but uh, this can be learned, and you are scouts, and uh, you did a good job as scouts. Oh, uh, yeah, and just continue to... <laughs> you, humble me. you humble me so much. The commander, he will so look forward to meeting you. We're part of, um, we're part of Poseidon's trident, a small contingent of, it, of Athens sent out to handle smaller threats. Um, our, our, our commander, his name is Adrius. He is... Um, uh, Oh god, how do you say this word? It's so hard. A loca ghost. A loca ghost? Which you'll know roughly translates to a captain. Yeah, okay. Uh, what was the, their captain's name one more time? Their um, commander's name? Adrius. Adrius. Mm -hmm. He has tremendous tremendous respect for soldiers. And although he's late in his life, he he still commands with utmost authority. I, I imagine you'll get on quite well. I'm anxious to meet this man. Mm. And yeah, continue we, small talk. <laughs> as you're going on, go ahead and make me a perception check, Carlos. <laughs> uh, here. Well, not so great. Uh, eight. Eight, yeah, okay, you don't see anything. 
so you feel eyes on you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I choose not to see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cold so, yeah. shoulder. Yeah. Not too long as your horses make steady progress um, with the hot flights traveling alongside, hauling these um, fallen friends in battle towards what seems to be an erected palisade, which is actually taking over the majority of the road, as though you couldn't pass this road without having to go through. The gates are not there, however. It just seems like some kind of checkpoint, but there is bustle around this place. Several um, several dozen more Athenian soldiers, or the same guard, at least some in armor, some without, seem to be gathered around tents, um, which are surrounding a larger one placed in the very center. Um, there is a small river nearby. It's, it's sort of the sound of the stream is pleasing to your ears in this very dusty, dusty landscape. But um, the Athenians, they see your approach and um, they they grab spear and they rush out to look towards these um, these slung over soldiers over the horse before a larger man in full Athenian armor, the blues of his mane vibrant against the sun, shouts out to the soldiers, what's happened? What, what, you didn't try and fight the thing alone, you bloody idiots, did you? Not alone, Commander. We were there too, and it was a success. The beast is dead. Yeah. It's when he speaks true, the beast is dead. And one of the hot flights will give him none. He said, well, although I am not the commander, but I must commend your efforts. He will be very pleased to meet you. Please come in, come in. Are they, are the soldiers, are they, are they dead? Uh, the one on my horse is still unconscious, but uh, we have two dead. It Press. was two dead, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He'll say, he'll say um, fetch the doctore. We've got one injured. And um, as you as you sort of walk into camp, you see that several people rush out. They seem to be dressed in arms themselves, but they seem to handle this man with complete um, care, as though you know this is going to be assumed to be who he was referring to. Uh, the large man approaches you all as these hot flights take their it's fallen away and leave themselves. He'll point towards the tent and say. Um, the command is in there, but he doesn't allow visitors into the tent so willingly. If you wouldn't mind, I'll I'll go and fetch him for you. Thank you. My pleasure. And uh, with that, you'll be getting um, make a perception check, Antigonus. Uh, eleven. Eleven. Yeah, that's probably enough as it is because you're getting stares around this camp. Several mm -hmm. people narrowing eyes at you or looking at you until you looked at them and which point their heads conveniently look somewhere else, which can feel a certain tension in the air as though everyone's sort of scooting a bit away from you in an unusual style that's alerting the most subconscious of your sort of your, your appreciation of the situation. Kara, Pruitt, a moment. Yes? Be sure that my um, affinity for a certain titan is not mentioned in this camp, please. My last Certainly. run at the uh, Athenian hoplites was not as jovial as the one that we just went through. I, see I would no warn Herodotus, but yes, just no mention of it. I would warn Herodotus, but I, I venture that he has no idea what I would be talking about. So Herodotus has yes. smelt some sort of like broth or something cooking, so he's following his <laughs> nose. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Herodotus, you follow your nose to a group of soldiers collected around to see some kind of stewed rabbit. With vegetables. That's say, is it rabbit? Yep, it's it, it is, <laughs> and it seems to be a hardy stew as well. They're not wanting the meat around here, and game seems to be plentiful. So it's stewed with all sorts of lovely Greek um, vegetables and all put together in a pot, which several soldiers are helping themselves to. And as you walk over, they see you, an old man, looking at this pot. At which point, they immediately um, grab you one and scoop in, and they move aside on a bench and say, "Please, please." Do. Oh, thank you. Is it, is it some rabbit? I like rabbit. It is indeed, my friend. The hardiest of rabbits. Take a seat. We'll get you a bowl. They will sit down. And with that, the Athenians, if they hand you this bowl of warm stew, which is pleasing to your hands, let alone your nose. As you look down at it, it seems to be welcoming you with its own side. Oh, <laughs> begging oh, you to eat it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Mm. Yeah, and the Athenians will look around you and say, but... Uh, who are you? Why, why are you here? This is no place for, if you'll excuse me, a man of your age. Oh, um, my, my name's Herodotus. Uh, and I, I, I'm a powerful wizard. I have to get that. It'll never become one, old. One, once per session. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, we well, we 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 killed that big cat. A powerful <laughs> wizard. <laughs> we killed a big cat, you say? Oh yes, yes. You must mean the manticore. Oh and yes. We heard the soldier speaking that it had been slayed. You must have helped them. They, they. Oh, that, that was it. And he goes through his pouches, pulls out his beastery. Okay. Right, magical. Right, sure, yeah. Uh, you write it as <laughs> best you know it. It to be spelled. You're, they don't spell it for you, but you best know how it's spelled, yeah. Um, absolutely. And they look to one another and they say, well, we owe you our thanks. As cowardly as it sounds, I appreciate the fact that we don't have to fight the beast ourselves. You've done us a great service. Please help yourself. We have some wine if you're interested. <laughs> oh, I love some wine. Pour him man some wine. He's more a soldier than any of us. And they'll let out a big hearty laugh at this and you'll get some wine poured for you. But meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, the tent flaps throw open and out walks a man in what looks to be some kind of scale armor far from this land, already perfected in style, but it seems to be over overflowing like fish scales. This man wears sort of like... um. Uh, what seems to be like finned pauldrons as he looks out across of you and he plants trident in the ground ahead of him he looks from one of you to the other and says I hear you're the ones to be thanked for slaying the beast yes indeed uh, we happened upon the beast at the right time the right place uh, and with the help of your men we slayed it I'm a praetor man from the ninth legion auxiliary ah ninth legion I've heard tale of a Ninth Legion. Yes, um, in Carthage. Indeed. I'm a big follower of war and history. Your, your war in Carthage was most entertaining, if you'll excuse the word, for a student of war such as myself. Oh, I take no offense. I myself, uh, after having retired, I spent many, many uh, days in the libraries in Athens studying war myself, so... Yes, uh, we will have to talk about this another time. Time is uh, relatively pressing, and uh, we have matters to discuss. Uh, what is your reputation inside Athens? What is your position? Ah, well, I fought in the Trojan War, so I command some respect, managed to survive that one like all the others I've lived through. That is a feat. That is uh, a very good thing to know. And uh, tell me, uh, your name is uh, Adrius? Address. Address, indeed, Address. yes. A pleasure, Mr. <laughs> Romain. Uh, Prewitt, Romain. Prewitt, no. yes. Uh, Address, have you heard word of Eritrea recently? Uh, no, I, I heard there was some kind of festival on at Eritrea, but I don't pay attention to such things. Do you know anyone from there? Um, I believe one of my lost sweethearts some 30 years ago, perhaps, but beyond that, no one personally No. Then you would not have personal contact. We come from Eritrea. We were at the event. And uh, it would seem that this gathering of heroes was for a, a more deadly purpose. The event was attacked and the city ransacked. We are on our way to Athens to own the city ourselves. But we would appreciate uh, your support in this. Of course. If an attack has happened on a Greek city, this is the, a matter of urgent importance. We must travel to uh, Athens at once and warn the city. I yes. would love to say this to you, but of course I have my own orders and I cannot return to Athens until my tasks are complete. I do not make the presumption that you go with us to Athens. Only a letter of recommendation would certainly help. I will indeed. You're owed as much. However, I would have words, not with you, but with your friend there. And I'll look to Antigonus. Hmm. You, sir, uh, would I, I be... I... Sorry, go ahead, I'm taking us some interrupting. <clears throat> I just said, I, I guess I draw an eye everywhere I go. Hmm. You, sir, would I be correct in assuming your lineage to be that of the orcish nature? As far as I know, I didn't know my father nor my mother, so what you see is what you get. And what I see is some kind of orc creature. You'll excuse That's the tongue, I've had some past... Uh, unpleasant experiences with the orcs and he'll yes. sort of put a hand on his cheek and you'll see a large scar that's sort of interrupting the bristling white whiskers of his beard and there is no hair growing there you see a deep red gash where it used to be a part of his face this one was given to me by an orc woman that i mistook to be a prisoner of war offering my hand i instead received her axe that sounds about right yeah 
Hmm. It's taken me a long time to trust an orc again after that, and my men think the same. Isn't that right? And all the men just sort of let out a low jeer at you. Not a, not a like cacophonous yes, but sort of say yeah, yeah, bloody orcs. You know. The moment that the fight was won, I attempted to heal the fallen. I do not know how else to earn your trust besides an act like that. He speaks the truth. I saw it. Magics, he works on the ones on the floor, but didn't take, but you can't knock him. He did try, and then, you know, they'll begin talking amongst themselves, and I'll say, right, well, I have words with you in my tent. There's something I need of you before I write you my glowing recommendation. I look about nervously alone. Yeah, he will not go alone. He accompanies us. There will at least be one of us with him. Very well. That matters not to me. As long as I have you in this tent, Mr. Antigonus is the name. Antigonus, a decidedly Greek name. Not something I've come to expect of someone of your racial persuasion. I was raised in an Athenian temple, believe it or not. That explains the manners, then. Not gnawing at bones in the wilds. The fact you're wearing armor alone lets me know you're a man of some decorum for an orc. I have not at a bone when I was hungry. I have worn armor in battle. Both of them seem practical to me. Hmm. That's true enough, true enough. Please, please, there's wine inside. Uh, one of you may accompany him. Please choose quickly. And uh, what's that man there? What's your name? And he'll look to you, Herodotus. <laughs> oh. Are you a soldier of some kind? You're looking for a war? You're too old. Go home. Uh, okay. Phil <laughs> <laughs> er, rather tease. Wait, wait outside. Uh, wait here. He is it's, with us. What did you say? Herodotus. Is his, his name? Well, what? He's a very powerful wizard. <laughs> no, look for him. Um, pro at Takara. Back to Herodotus. <laughs> yeah. Ex ex did you say what? No. H his name is Herodotus. Yes, that is what I said. How the Herodotus? We are not sure, but he certainly has some skill in magic and a problem with memory. Well, uh, uh, excuse me, men, would you stand aside? You're sitting on a bench of Herodotus. You don't <laughs> share a bench with a man of that renown without letting me know he's in the camp first. All of you took arms, all of you on guard immediately. And with that, he's a decorum changes. Everybody who's having a hearty laugh, drinking wine, eating stew, just drop them on the ground immediately. He quickly standing. tries to eat his. <laughs> in case he tries to take that off of him. <laughs> yeah, <it's keeping laughs> everyone bustling around you, or right? you sort of ladle the soup into your mouth. But uh, everyone else is completely on point now, and their shields are held to their chest, their spears upright as they make a perimeter around the camp, keeping guard of what you can't really tell. But they're all just making sure that they look busy. As the man says, "Please." Uh, Herodotus says, you must come inside. That Put that stew down. It is dog food. I have much better food. Oh, oh, it was rough and yeah, uh, Herodotus, why don't you accompany your good friend Antigonus inside the commander's tent? Oh, okay. I insist. Please, it would be my utmost honor. Men, keep guard. We have a, an important statesman in the camp. <laughs> I, Antigonus looks at Herodotus very... Confused. He looks back. Like <laughs> Who do you think they mean? <laughs> I think they mean you. <laughs> this whole time you've been full of surprises. I guess I'm getting less and less surprised every day. You want to meet? Let's go. And before you enter Antigonus, ahead of um, ahead of Herodotus, he'll put a hand on your shoulder and lead into you and says, "You do speak Orcish, yes? I do. Yes. Very well. That's all I need. Please go ahead. And." Um, you and uh, Herodotus, unless you say so, enter the tent and the flap closes behind you as the commander follows behind. Adrias, fo Adrias, Adrius follows behind. Um, meanwhile, Kara, you um, feel a tap on your back. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, hello. Um, what's, what's your name? Kara. Kara, yes. I've never heard such a name like that. I, I've never seen someone like you in, in the whole of this land. I must know where you're from. You're quite shocking to look at. Not in a bad way, though. In a quite a pleasant way. You're, I never seen hair. I, my name, my name's Erebus, <laughs> and I, hello, I was Erebus. Yes, hello, Kara. I, I was there in the Manticore Field. We 
we are now comrades in battle. So I thought I'd best introduce myself to you. Lovely. Um, oh. I, I, you're, are you going to Athens? Yes, oh. we're headed to Athens. Wonderful. Me, me too, as it happens. Uh, as soon as we're finished with this task, I'll be in Athens as well. And I, um, well, I, I, I have many, many very interesting things in Athens. I, I'm a member of the local amphitheatre, and um, I know I know several playwrights personally. And if you like, we could we could, if you wanted to, I mean, we could um, perhaps go and see a tragedy. I, I know a great new play. It's called Prometheus Bound. It's it's meant to be fascinating, even to me. And I hate orcs. I really do. Don't let the commander hear me say otherwise. I hate orcs to the bone. But this play, I, I must see, and I have no one to go with. And I was thinking. Um, maybe you are interested in Greek culture. I, yes, yes. I've heard of this play. I don't have time. And ah. you really should open your mind a little bit. This whole orc hating thing, it's very unbecoming. Of course, you, I don't really hate orcs. The commander hates orcs. But I, <laughs> you, you just said you hated orcs, like two seconds ago. <laughs> yes, I know I said that, but you've got to understand the situation I'm in here. Everyone in this camp hates orcs. I can't be the only one who sympathizes with them. Oh, understand. so the situation is that you're just going to say whatever you think is going to suit the conversation that the person you're talking to. And he's turning bright red as you speak to him like this. And he'll say, I only said what I thought was true. I, I, I'm honest, I wouldn't lie. I, I am a good person. I, I can show you I'm a good person. I'm sure you are. You you proved yourself well in battle. Um, if you'll excuse me, Prewit, Prewit, uh, I need to speak to you for a moment. <laughs> and Prewit is off like where Herodotus was sitting, except he's talking to the other soldiers, and it's gotten to the point where he's narrating a full story of what happened in Carthage, and this was how the battle went, and like even <laughs> pantomiming some stabbing. And right, roll me a performance check uh, as you yeah, sure. relay a story. <laughs> how you how well you relay a story and mime this oh, uh, action no. of fighting. <laughs> No, no. Oh. Do you know what? Roll with advantage because honestly, oh. okay. <laughs> I think it's fair. He's like, full of shit, this one. You're you're a soldier and you're doing this. And I think this is something they'd be super interested in. So, you know. I rolled the it? same thing twice. Oh, for God's oh, sake, man. I'm doing everything I can to help you. <laughs> I mean. What did you roll? Seven. Okay, seven, yeah. You sort of mind, but you slip up on your own feet at some point. And you tell the story in a way that has someone wandering off at some point. But some of them hang on, and it's interesting to them. Um, meanwhile, Kara, this uh, hot flight that you can turn down sort of slinks back over and stands next to another one. And the other one just looks at him and then punches him on the side of the helmet. And um, he just lets him, you fucking idiot. Heard the old thing, didn't I, you moron? Um, <laughs> And that's how Adam Driver was born. <laughs> <laughs> um, meanwhile, in, back inside the tent, everything is kept at a dim light here, except um, obviously in the corners where there are pleasant candles lit. In though, although it's daytime outside, you would never be able to tell. Um, sitting at the table, there is somebody you've not seen before, and he seems to be the only figure in the tent other than the commander himself. He paces around. Uh, he immediately pours from a skin of wine into a bowl for you, Herodotus, as he puts it before you. And beyond that, he fetches some bread as well and puts it in a small sort of pewter dish ahead of you. Please, eat. I, I've i never thought of entertaining someone of your caliber, but it is an honor. I'm sorry for the rather offensive surroundings, but we this war camp after all. Oh, well. oh I couldn't. I'm quite full. Oh, I'll <laughs> drink some wine. Ah, well, uh, um, please help yourself. And um, you, sir, and he'll... He, he, his face is like pleasant and welcoming as he speaks with Herodotus and it turns to Antigonus and there's an immediate drop in respect as his face just sort of goes the inverse way in a big And you, if you want my recommendation in Athens personally, you have to help me out with him. And he'll nod to the person sitting at the table who is currently wearing the hood up and his head down. <laughs> <coughs> I imagine that um, you would offer me some wine as well, but are you afraid I'd lap it like a dog? Hmm. You can have some wine if you Thank act you. according with Athenian customs, as you claim to do. And he'll pour some wine into another pewter cup and hand it to you. I will stick my pinky out as I take a little drink from it. <laughs> He'll get a small smirk from as he does this. Uh, and as you look across Antigonus, uh, inside the room with the commander there, 
there is the unmistakable gait and physique of an orc under heavy clothing and a hood up slumped over the table. And from his eyes, he just instantly looks up, looks at you and looks them back down to the table. Hmm. I imagine you found this in the mountains not far from here, yes? On the contrary. Our good friend here came to us in the camp. Did he? Yes, claims or to she. have wandered down from the mountains. It is a he, as far as I can tell, but given your race, I am open to interpretation. I wonder. Yes, we are not be able we're not able to um speak the rather coarse and rough discourse of the Orcish language. Unable to piece it together really, but he seems to be trying to tell us something important, and I've had trouble picking up the local tongue, so if you wouldn't mind acting as interpreter, then perhaps we can get to the bottom of what it is he's trying to tell us. Sure. And in Orcish I quickly say, For now we are strangers. As you say, speaking common. Mm -hmm. You'll say, as you say, Antigonus. And um, I guess, roll me a uh, perception, Herodotus. Natural one. Natural one, (laughs) yeah. You don't seem to piece together that Antigonus is the same in Orcish as it is in common. So (laughs) I I actually do. Do you? I mean, you got a one, didn't you? I speak Orcish. Oh, okay. If you speak oh, Orcish, then it's wow. completely different. Okay, fair enough. If you speak Orcish, you hear I was him keeping back. quiet. <laughs> okay, fair enough. You say uh, you hear him addressing Tigonus by name before he bows his head down to the table again. And on the table, you see what seems to be a hastily drawn, rather inaccurate map of the road leading up to the camp and beyond into the mountains. And what did he say? He said, uh, he's glad to see a fellow orc. What do you want? Well, he came to us. Tell him that he can explain to you and you will tell me. Fine. So I switch to Orcish again and I say, you've made some strange allies today. What is it you would have them do? Anvil's given me orders. Told me to lead them to the outpost. We haven't had any guests to the outpost in quite some time. Why? Why now? And I should clarify, there is a difference in Tignus between the outpost and the colony. Oh, I see. Okay. There's a okay. smaller cave called the outpost. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, has something gone wrong at the outpost? There's something Anvil is planning. He's not told me the details. But the Athenians, they must reach the outpost. Tomorrow at the latest. I've been trying to tell them where it is, what paths to avoid, what path is good, what path has few rocks that fall from above, but they don't listen. Well, language is a fickle thing. I'll try to explain here. Uh, if you can let Anvil know that I would be coming with them, so whatever he has planned, he could be a little more careful, perhaps. The Athenians, they won't let me go. They're here to find the colony. They may not have told you, but it is their task to destroy us, to stomp us into the dirt. What is he saying? That's enough. Enough conversation, enough back and forth. You're an interpreter, not a conversationalist. He has quite a bit of information to tell you. He's been trying to point to a map. Can you not read when a man gives you visual cues? He is saying more than the map details. Why would he point to several directions? What do these crosses mean? What does a circle mean here? I shan't let this orc lead my men into an ambush. I don't believe he's trying to do such a thing. It sounds to Uh, me that there's some trouble. He would hope that the Athenians would use their superior numbers to help. This manticore, perhaps it wasn't alone. Hmm, the manticore is alone, I assure you. But tell me exactly what he said, exactly. He's asking that the Athenian soldiers come to a place that he calls the outpost, I believe. The outpost? To say that there's some sort of meeting that must must happen there. Someone seems to be hurt. You do realize why we're here? I, I do not. Well, the task is twofold. For the trident, 
We are too, and I can tell you this, assuming I'm all in good company here. Herodotus, I don't imagine you would keep company of a savage orc. You can vouch for this one. Oh, yes, he's a good man. Hmm, good. We are here to stomp out Titan worshippers, to see them scattered to the wind where they belong. This is a land for cultured Olympians, not those who would worship the older gods. So is Athens' dominion crossed past its walls now? Athens' dominion is where Athens decrees. Hmm. I see. Don't think Athens would suffer titan worship in the mountains it is an affront to the gods it matters not whether it's in athens domain or not <laughs> the way that you describe orcs <laughs> the fact that they could worship anything other than the next day's meal it's strange to me i don't see how you even think that such a colony would exist i have it on good information my friend here we believe is from such a colony and we believe he's trying to lead us there am Are i they- correct Sounds to me he wants you to follow a particular path, and it seems that he's desperate. That's what I can tell you. And to me it sounds like an ambush. Am I wrong? I have no details about such a thing. Oh no, it didn't sound like it. Hmm. Ask him if it's an ambush, and then he is going to keep a close look on this orc's face as you ask him, trying to gauge his reaction. I ask him in orcish. Do you like vegetables? <laughs> no. <laughs> and then I report to him. I don't believe there's any sort of uh, ambush here. He says very clearly no. Hmm. Well, it just looks a bit confused. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't trust it. I don't trust it. I don't like it. But we will find this colony one way or another. Titan worship will not be tolerated. There is a clay mine near here, a clay quarry of some sorts, and there is no workers there. Clay quarries tend to prop up wherever there is a cult of Prometheus. Interesting. You wouldn't know anything about that, of course. I, an Athenian boy, travel to Eritrea. What do I have to do with any kind of Titan? Mm, yeah, that's going to be a hard deception check for me, man. <laughs> no, not a hard one, just a deception check. 13 plus, probably not much, uh, plus one, 14. Okay, <laughs> he'll, he'll sort of study you for a long time. There was a pregnant pause in the air as he just says, yes, Athenian indeed. Well, I don't suppose you'd have any trouble helping us find this colony and stomping it out then? As far as I can tell, the map is pretty clear. <laughs> mm. Even I can tell uh, orcish scratchings like these. And here I am without three of my soldiers due to a certain manticore incident. Now I can compensate you. Perhaps others. Hmm, Perhaps. I, however, am here for two tasks. One is to kill a manticore. The other is to kill an idea. The idea that orcs are are free to worship Prometheus. And if you are, as you say, a true Athenian, well, I would almost say it's your duty to help me in this regard. Wouldn't you agree, Herodotus? Oh, no, we've got our own business to do. Ah, well, my friend, I'm sure you would agree that this takes the most importance for the time being. We will escort you personally to Athens once this is seen through. But in the meantime, I would ask your aid. You'll be compensated, and I will introduce you to all I know in Athens. If you can help me with this task, I don't believe that... I am in need of assistance, perhaps from somebody more adept in the rougher side of things. And he'll look well, I would be honored to join you in this mission. I don't have the hatred that you have for any sort of worship, but sure, of course, if you can get us this letter and send the message to Athens about the, uh, the terrible news of Eritrea, then you have our service. Of course, I will dispatch a boy immediately. Consider it a down payment on your services. Um, And he'll begin scrolling a note on some papyrus before he looks over to um, the orc once again. And the orc will, against prior instruction, speak up on his own will. And he'll say, Go to Anvil. Go to him. 
He's in the colony. They don't know where the colony is. Enough. Enough talking. What did he say? He said, please hurry, please, to the outpost. We need your assistance now. Yes. Well, we'll get there in due time. We'll set off tomorrow. In the meantime, I suggest you all get some hearty food and a good night's rest. Tomorrow we'll see fighting unlike any of you have ever seen. The orc can be a savage foe, but it can be bested. Best with steel, bested with cunning. It is barbaric, it is strong, but it will be felled and it bleeds. Believe me, I know. I have bled many of them. Herodotus will ask the orc, in orcish, if he would like some bread. <laughs> and he'll immediately look over to you, Herodotus, realising you've understood everything that he and, said. And he'll hand the bread to the orc. And the orc will take it, and he'll just sink, he'll basically mouth the whole thing. And just chew it, open mouth, so you can see it all becoming liquidated in his in his chops. Until he swallows with a gargantuan... <coughs> well, thanks. They just give me grass. And they think we eat grass. Oh, I can get you some rabbit stew if you like. That was uh, good. You are good, human, <laughs> but I don't think they'll let me eat the stew. Commander, one last request. Is it that this man stops talking to my orc? Herodotus, no. please, I respect you immensely, but I did not I did not, well, I should have expected from a man of your skills that you speak several languages, but please, he is a uh, prisoner. Oh, he's just hungry. I'm going to go get him some rabbit. No, no, it's fine. We'll keep him fed. You stay away from Herodotus. He is dangerous. I'm going to try this. You would deny Herodotus his request? Well, it's not something I would want reported to my upper, uh, commander. Oh, just hold on one second. It's for his own good. That is a dangerous <laughs> animal he's speaking to. Herodotus has given him his, his own uh, favor here. In fact, I think he needs two bowls of rabbit stew. Roll me and I would have you not harm this man until we understand what's going on in the outpost. All right. Get me that intimidation roll. Oh, that does look like he would need two bowls. <laughs> uh, Herodotus at this point will just head out to, to go and sure. get two bowls. Uh, that is an 11 total. Uh, an 11. Won't quite do it, unfortunately. And he'll say, Herodotus is an old man. And he'll say this as Herodotus has left. If you would allow his feeble-mindedness to be his undoing at the hands of an orc, then it is you are who are in the wrong, not myself. I believe he's lasted this long. I believe he'll last a little while longer, don't you think? Mm, well, that's for us to find out and us to take care of. We can't allow him to get close to savage beasts. And if you'll see in his eyes, he's almost forgotten that he's actually talking to a half orc himself at this point. Well, I do believe a rest is in order if we plan to leave in the morning. Where would you have us camp? You can camp with us. <coughs> Fair. Fair. All right. We will set off to this outpost come midday tomorrow after preparations have been made. I will send the boy to Athens tonight with the message that Eritrea has been under attack. This is pressing news. Please do not find me wrong. I am concerned by this, but if I return to Athens without completing this task, then, well, my credibility will have been destroyed and my letter of recommendation will be for naught. I wanted to walk nah. back in with two bowls of uh, stew at this point. Uh, Mr. Uh, Herodotus, please. Hand me the stew, I will hand it to the orc, and he'll hand his hand down. He'll put oh, it nonsense. Between. And All right. he'll slap his hand away. <laughs> Go sit down, boy. As you say, Herodotus, yes, please. <laughs> I, I, will, I will take a seat, and he'll take a seat immediately down. I'll go and hand the two bowls to the orc. All right. hey. uh, there you go. He just, like, <laughs> uh, like a bowl of sake, he just lifts it and tips the whole thing in, throws the bowl aside, takes the other one. <laughs> 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 oh, he was hungry. Oh, go get me some more. Rabbit. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just walk back out again. <laughs> All right, and you come in with more rabbit? I'll come in with the hot with the, uh, the kettle. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah, the pot. Right. Roll me a strength throw. Just a flat <laughs> Roll me athletics. Athletics. Oh, Jesus. Flat roll. <laughs> Twelve. 12. Yeah, you manage it. You're tipping stew everywhere, but you're managing this big pot. <laughs> manage to get it into the, it... into the de tent and go ahead. And what do you do with it? I'll put it on the table with the map is. All right, sure. And then it will go and pick up the bowls and then like scoop him some out. Sure. And you needn't scoop it some out because he takes a bowl himself and he just begins ladling it in like as quick as he I'll can. So to the captain, would you like some? It's lovely. 
I wouldn't presume <laughs> to share a meal with an orc. And I suggest you do otherwise. <laughs> they carry diseases, you know. My. Hope you can sanitize your hands after you shook my hand earlier. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> I will try. But in the meantime, camp, make do. If you need any supplies, we will be happy to oblige. Uh, we- I do apologize for my abrasiveness, Antigonus. I have been fighting orcs all my life, and I have developed maybe a certain attitude, which Herodotus has been kind enough to remind me of I should not be so quick to judge. I, I hope you'll forgive my, my forthrightness. I- I imagine orcs have been fighting you your whole life, too. They may have a similar opinion. Sometimes we just look to break the pattern. Mm, very well. And if you don't mind me asking, which god is it you serve? Well, I served Athens and served Athena for most of my life. Then I've gone on to find my own. That's all I know right now. Yeah, most interesting. Athena is the most wisest of gods. You'd be so very wise to follow her. And there's no need to roll deception, because I think that's true. That's fairly true. Yeah. Fairly yeah. True. Okay, fair enough. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so um, this orc is still ladling food into his mouth, but he'll just take a pause between, like, he'll make it sound like grunting, but he's actually conveying a message to you two. And he'll say, go to the colony. Speak with Anvil. He'll let you know the plan. And he'll just keep eating and eating. Um, I sh- What's going on, guys? What do you want to do? <laughs> well, uh, we'll leave, yes. I'll take we leave the tent. So, yeah. As you leave the tent, the commander is just sitting across from this orc who is just like, eating in front of him, much like spilling stew all over his nice table and his nice map. But um, yeah, you leave. And outside, uh, Pru and Kara, is there anything you've been doing? Are we okay? Oh, so I just I came up with why my performance check was so bad. Right. So while I'm, while I'm telling the story, the story is actually pretty good, mm. but it's just full of criticisms of the Greek military. <laughs> so, like, so I'm just bashing Greek military the whole time. And so by the time I'm done, there's only like two people left watching. Yeah. And the two are left watching, just looking at each other like, okay, <laughs> thank you for your story. <laughs> we'll try and be better. <laughs> like, uh, it is not a matter of uh, skill per se. It's just uh, you only do the phalanx formation, and that is very limited. You have to surround, you have to build ballista, artillery. <laughs> I don't know how to build a ballista. Right, well, you have to <laughs> hire someone who does. Okay, well, good luck finding the drachmi. And um, he'll just get storm off with a bit of huff. And <laughs> you're just left sitting across one from one hot fight, and he'll just say, Nice weather today. Um, I'm, I'm going to go now too, Mr. Bruno. <laughs> Good luck to you. And he'll, he'll, he'll sort of scoot up as well. And so you're left alone. <laughs> well, Kara would have joined partway through as mm-hmm. she was using Prewit as her excuse to get away from <laughs> Erebus earlier. So she would have just so, been sitting there trying to pay attention, but not really caring or understanding the, the military left tactics. Listening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so. yeah, uh, Pro will finish his story. Look over to Antigonus. So, what news? <clears throat> much news, much news. I need somewhere we can chat. Oh, the, I, the yeah. commander's an ass. <laughs> hmm. Herodotus, I was quite impressed by your performance in there. Oh, in what way? Exactly. Well done. <laughs> uh, can we find a uh, a little nook to talk? Perhaps we can hitch the horses and discuss some things. Yeah, we'll go over and do that. Hmm. Yeah, easy enough to do. No problem. And uh, you will find some sort of part of the camp where hot plates seem to be in less concentration. Perhaps, as you say, some part of the palisade or some tent that's currently unoccupied. Mm. Yeah. So making sure, looking around, that no one's listening to us, I I relay basically what happened in the tent, um, adding in. This colony that he speaks of, this is my home. These soldiers are here to eradicate us. I have to send a message to Anvil, our leader. I have to let him know what's going on. How far away is the, the colony from here? Not far, maybe an hour's ride. Thankfully, it's quite well hidden, so that's why they've been circling around it and haven't found the entrance yet. But they will soon, and we need to be ready. Antigonus, will you tell the people in this hideout of yours to run or to fight? 
I'm not the commander, I'm just an adjutant. What would you have me tell them? Would you have them tell them to fight or run? Run. This is not a war that is worth fighting. Leave their home forever? The only place they've ever known? It is a place. There are many places. You cannot replace people. Hmm. How many live there? Uh, the colony is at least a hundred, last I checked. I haven't been there in a few weeks, but it's been there for a, quite a few years now. Uh, we're on Are our they... second generation of people. So their families, not all of them, would be fighting men. In fact, most of them aren't, no. There's a few in the orcish side that seem to be able to swing an axe. And then in the goblin side, well, they're a bit crafty and... <laughs> Um, he gets lost in his thoughts for a second, remembering home. But no, there are plenty there that just farm, that just worship in private. Perhaps they left Athens was... for a reason. They left the terrible countryside where their tribes would not allow them such worship for a reason. This was their haven. Well, perhaps it would be wiser then for them to leave for a time. Is there anywhere else nearby they could flee to? It, even temporarily to boost their numbers. <clears throat> oh, they could go to Eritrea. That's fair. That, that is <laughs> not, not a terrible idea, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. There um, is a new king there that I've heard. Yes. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. It's a mm. tough one. <laughs> it's enough of one of those cats. <laughs> mm. I imagine this is going to be a hard sell, but I will make it their effort. But if this, if this squadron, whatever, I, as I've walked around, have we been able to tell how many how many soldiers there are in this? Uh, Roughly particular? two dozen. You can't make a great estimate. Some may be out on patrol, some may be in tents, but you count about 20, and you could, which you can assume tacked on, there may be four or five. All right. Um, Based on the number of scouts, would I know what the total size might be? <laughs> uh, you, you as a soldier, probably, yeah. You know, I, I think you'd have general good idea of Greek military and stuff, and their size in terms of um, what they deploy as a basic battalion, around thirty men. But having lost three, or you know, lost two and one not able, you can no. assume the likelihood is about twenty-eight, including the commander. Uh, if this were Rome, then a surrender would be allowed. Most of the time, they would be allowed to continue worshipping the same gods, but uh, they're Greeks. These people harbor hatred in their hearts. I don't think they're going to be reasoned with. No. Let me ask you the tough question. Were it to come down to it, were we to lead them into some sort of ambush situation and being asked to turn our blades against these very, very ones we saved, would you be with me? I would. Only if the option was given for the Greeks to surrender first. Herodotus, do you have any opinion here? Well, I'd like to think it won't come to battle. I would suggest two options. The first, to run, probably to Eritrea, that is a good idea. And the second to ambush, but not to fight, to scare. Scare the Greeks into submission. We need to get word the... to your people. Yes, we do. I don't know if it's faster for the four of us to sneak out together for me to go alone. What do you think? Well, I can help with the sneaking, but I don't know if all of us should go I'm trained as a scout. I'm trained as a scout, but I fear that it, only your word would be taken, Antigonus. But if you go, I think the commander here will suspect something, certainly. Perhaps, Antigonus, is, is there something that you have that you could give us that we could show them if Prewit and I went, that their leader would recognize to give value to our word? I do, and I point to the holy symbol that's on my chest. The symbol doesn't mean much to anyone else, but it means a bit to our uh, to our colony. Uh, question: Has the messenger already left to Athens from here? 
Uh, by this time, probably, yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Dang it. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. We could also make an excuse for the captain. We could tell him that we need to uh, check in on the other members of our party that have gone ahead to make sure the manticore has not hurt them, that we'd be back by nightfall. We could try, but he might not buy it, and then he might be extra suspicious. Perhaps the plan coming from uh, you, Kara, would be a bit more understandable. I'll just be quiet. I can certainly try. Well, that'll be the plan first, and if we can't do that, then... I guess perhaps the two of you can sneak out and I can I can stay here. I can give you some messages, but communicating will be very difficult. I don't know exactly there, how you do that. There is one alternative. I can speak uh, He to respects them. Herodotes. One of us could escort Herodotes out of the war zone, so to speak, and circle around. Now that's an idea. Yeah. Good, good. Let's sell them on that. Herodotus should not be at war. We'll squirt him away and then come back by nightfall. Who will accompany Herodotus and warn your people? Again, I think if you go, Antigonus, it might arouse more suspicion. I can go. Kara seems to be the best bet, although perhaps we could, if it's a package deal, if we can make the... The request for all of us first, and then if that we'll fails... We'll try that first, but if not, yeah. then... I will volunteer to stay behind regardless. And Antigonus, maybe you should go. After all, your word is much more valued than ours in your encampment. I agree. All right, Kara, you're on. All right. Shall I go alone? Or pray with... behind you, but... Would you like to... Oh, well, you could take us. Antigonus. I will... Hmm. Leader uh, sorry, leader, you might... Oh, yeah, take it a shit go, I think. I will speak to the commander and suggest that you three go and I stay. If that fails, then... Oh, I think the very least... a bit too... And, uh... As he's sort of standing there, Herodotus will sort of, like, whisper a few words. And concentrate. And turn himself into Antigonus. Okay. Interesting. Uh, you disguise self as, in a, as a spell, yeah? Alter yeah. self. Alter self. Okay. Um, yeah. Do you want to link the spell? Because I, does it work as a disguise or is it? You assume it a does. different form. I can turn, I can breathe underwater. I can change appearance. Yeah, fair enough. That's cool. Um, I can get yeah, so disguise weapons. self is an illusion. Alter <laughs> self, you actually change your yeah, body a little bit. It's a yeah. Yeah. So that's gotcha, 100 percent. yeah okay yeah so over the next few <laughs> sessions you'd have thought that maybe you'd seen them as much of this as you were pleased to antigonus but like much like the doppelganger from the um <laughs> or you see someone turning into your form until they are a spinning image of you would that make things simpler that's impressive herodotus i think you should go alone and he tries to speak in his voice and everything <laughs> 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 uh Yes, I, I guess I'm a bit lost. What, what does this help us with? <laughs> Antigonus, it will allow you to go, Antigonus. Yes, leave now, Antigonus. I will tell the commander that Herodotus has already left. And then it will turn into the commander. Or, Antigonus, <laughs> if you'd like me to join you, because I can help you sneak out, um, perhaps we could just tell him that I, being a weak woman, took the old man out away and you say yes i think that that's now i'm now i'm clued into the plan yes i think that that works well i would leave now it is better ask uh, to ask forgiveness than permission from the commander i will talk to him now right. herodotes come with me antigonus a moment i'm gonna take my staff and start spinning it twirling it in the air and it's gonna slowly, all of the shadows around are gonna just start gathering and gathering and kind of create this cloud of darkness that's gonna settle over Antigonus and myself. And I'm casting Pass Without a Trace. Okay, cool, good to know. Such wow. a good low level spell. <laughs> very, very good indeed. All right, and Before sure. Pruitt walks away, I say, uh, Prometheus guide you and I give you a guidance 1d4. All right, okay, cool. I'll need it the way I'm rolling. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. 
All oh, right, cool. Yeah. So uh, we'll do. Um, I think Pruitt and Herodotus first. I'll change back to myself and then walk, okay. and walk with, with Pruitt. Sure. And, no, no, no. Um, Stay as Antigonus. Oh. <laughs> That's oh, the point. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll turn back to Antigonus. That then. was my original plan. I thought that you yeah. were going to you, but now, okay, you're me. That's that's yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> so as you guys, confusing um, me. As you guys are approaching. No, no, no. Stay as. Mm. Mm. Are you guys going to the tent to meet the commander yet, or? Yeah, well, if if he's available, I mean, we're not going to go out of our way. Yeah, sure. Um, well, all you see from the tent is after a few moments of silence, there is just launched through the tent's flap an empty bowl of rabbit stew, or what was once rabbit stew. Just it's thrown right through the um, the tent doors, and it rolls to a stop in the middle of the camp. Mm-hmm. Uh, Commander, there's no answer. There's no response from inside the tent. Is there a guard posted outside the tent? No, not right now, no. Okay. Yeah, we will speak to him later, but uh, how long does that last, Antigonus? Oh. Oh. <clears throat> oh. Up to an hour. <laughs> mm. And uh, do you have another use? Yes. Let us set up a tent and uh, haul you inside. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to set up a tent put him inside and just have him buckle down and <laughs> just sit there and be Antigonus. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, if that's the case, then I would take a short rest and regain. You know, I, well, I yeah. Well, the idea is I'm thing. going to stay outside the tent and if anybody's about to come in that needs to speak oh, to yeah, Antigonus, I can cast that instantly, yeah. yeah then, yeah. then I'll warn him before we go into the tent. Okay. Yeah, that's fair enough. Okay. Yeah, I want to do the, uh, what's it called? Uh, Arcane Recovery. Yeah, and then I can get that back. So I'm back as Herodotus at the moment. So when I yeah. need it, I've got two uses of it. I got you. Yeah. So it's nice. going to be like an hour of short rest. Which uh, yeah. in the meantime, we'll go to um, Kara and Antigonus then, mm-hmm. as you guys are trying to sneak out the camp. I think that's what we try to do. All right. And if you're trying to do it stealthily, I need a stealth roll from both of you to do so. So is this advantage or plus ten? Which one is plus it? ten? Plus ten. Yeah. All right. Eight plus. Uh, I rolled an eight as actually. One, nine, so 19 total. I got 18. All right, yep, um, there's a pretty good rolls. Um, you managed to sort of take a, a rough memory of where the guards patrol around the palisade, and you can pinpoint a singular 10 second window when you can sneak right out of view and around a tree nearby, and you guys are safely out of the camp. You don't hear any signs of alarm, you don't hear anyone shouting after you. You do seem to have gotten out of the camp safely enough. Well, perhaps that was easier than I thought. <laughs> so far, so good. There's a long road ahead. Yes. Well, the uh, the colony is, tends to be hidden in the mountains. It's a bit of a trek, but once we find it, you'll see. And I start heading towards the uh, familiar entrance to my home. Yeah, sure. Over the course of the next hour, you are traveling through rocky terrain as the gradient gets steeper and steeper and the road seems to wind side to side as it climbs vicious, unscalable mountainsides other than this one track. Uh, You'll see several um, footprints along this track and several cart tracks, even for the more intrepid traveler that would move a cart over such a a mountain. But you, Antigonus, you know where to look, you know what to see, and what others don't see is the peculiar tree with one branch that points off to the side and puts off a very, very small track down between a crag. Mm, Recognizing that we're getting close, I look to Kara. Earlier, when I asked for your allegiance, you didn't hesitate for a moment. I... I must say that meant a lot to me. Of course. I have no allegiance to the Greeks. I know you. (laughs) Well, just know that it goes farther than you think. Come over here for a moment, and I um, move towards that particular stone that you pointed out. Yeah, sure. A large sort of um, broken stone. It looks to be like a, a boulder that has been, if you imagine like a giant axe has been caved in and then taken out, it seems to have been cracked into you by something. Mm-hmm. So I will uh, look up in the sky. Do I see any uh, thing up there above me? Mm. Do you see like some... Any animals? Uh, yeah, you see some birds flying around, some vultures, it seems, carrying of some kind. Yes. All right. Uh, this is a bit of a 
cool trick. I can't say that I left the co community, the colony very often, but I do love entering. And so I pull a clay figurine from my pouch and I set it between the crack of the boulder. And then I take a little pinch of bird seed and I toss it right across the, um, the clay figure. Sure thing. And as if by some kind of ancient taught ritual or some kind of very deeply inset trick, the vultures ahead begin to circle until one bends down towards you and then flies back up and it begins to circle again. And another one does the same until one just shoots down straight towards this, um, this figure you've put in the crack of the rock. And it sort of perches using its talons to claw to the side and it sort of twitches its bald, horrible carrion vulture head, its long beak looking to you, Antigonus, and to you, Kara, before it turns back to the clay figure. And suddenly it pecks the bird seed out from its stomach as though it rips the bird seed out from its stomach, not even eating it, just throwing it aside. You see tiny bits of clay until the figure is left from the um, the vulture as it takes off into the sky. And you'll see that this small clay figure is just a see-through where its stomach was. And suddenly the clay figure sinks into the entrance, this crack of rock, and it begins to spread. And soon enough, it catches a tiny tinder of flame. A green flame begins to encompass that entire as though it's being filled by some molten metal to fill in this um this this you know this big um crag in the rock until it spreads and the rock itself begins to open wide opening like some giant hellish mouth of fire and the fire suddenly goes out and there is a smallest passage enough for someone to go single file through i'm after you glad you came i don't know if prewit and i could have pulled that off well fair enough i I don't, not sure I was ever going to let you go by yourselves, but I did like to entertain <laughs> his argument. He, he does have good ideas, mostly. These birds, are they special to your people? Well, do you know much about the Promethean myth? No. Prometheus stole fire from Zeus and gifted it to humankind, mankind. In doing so, he was punished, chained to a boulder for the rest of eternity, and every night a vulture plucks out his liver, only to have it grow back for the same event to happen the next day. How morbid. Indeed. A fair price to pay for betraying the gods, perhaps, but I would see far much more of their gifts given out to mankind, as with the rest of my colony. So uh, we sort of took it up as, a, I guess, a, a mantle of pride. If you're having your liver picked by a vulture, well... You've done something to betray the gods, and indeed, this is worthwhile. And I suppose if you're willing to endure a punishment so great as that, you very much care about your mission. Life, as we have it, is a punishment as great as that. Welcome to the colony of the first. And I sort of usher her through. All right, and there we'll take a break. And we'll be back <laughs> in like 10 minutes. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll be back in cool. 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. See you guys in 10 minutes. Yeah. Hello there. You've caught me in the middle of making a little clay man. <laughs> Something else that was done before the break in order to access <laughs> the colony of the first. Um, but yeah, as we left the party, or we left Antigonus and Kara, they just split open an already in twain rock until it was completely wide. And it allowed a small space for a certain single file people to pass through i uh i imagine you'll want to follow behind me this may take a little explaining but sure if you're ready let's go let's go start moving on through all right um yeah it's a long dark passage this um it seems to just go into the mountain so what you saw where this rock was it seemed like a boulder that had been fallen off the mountain but it seems to go much deeper uh, it's a long time before you start seeing signs of light that pass around the bend. And as you do, you realize this to be where the colony begins. And taking this, you'd be aware of this. So, yeah, you do make it round there. And it's not long as you've, someone's heard the scuffling coming round before someone shouts out, Who goes there? Prometheus guide you, friend. Uh, I'm Prom Pr Pr Prometheus guide you, but who goes there? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Antigonus has returned, the prodigal son. Oh, oh, Antigonus! Wow, it's been so. Oh, yeah, come on, come on. Uh, I, 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 
can't wait to see it. Come out from the dark. Come out from the dark. Sure. I, uh, I have someone with me. Just so you know, she's not like us, but she's a friend. Oh, she's she's got broken. Haha. <laughs> well, we've not had many of them in the cabin for some time, but I'm sure Anvil will be fine with it if if she's with you. Well, I'll vouch for her. I need to see Anvil immediately. Please let him know that I'm coming. Oh, sure thing. But first, come on, let me see. I'm not seeing you in some time. <laughs> I'll uh, cast light on uh, on my mace as we lead forward, and yeah, the green glow encompasses the cavern as we walk. Sure. And other than the torch that's at the very end of the cabin, there is no light in here at, at all. So, Kari, you can only see what is lit by Antigonus. Every vision of this so cave. Can... Oh, you have dark vision? Yeah, I'm, I'm an uh, elf. I keep forgetting you're an elf, you know? I'm <laughs> <laughs> thinking like a human, but yeah, I remember that you are an elf indeed. So, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, you'll see it as well. But you will notice um, the unusual lack of light indoors, which, you know, is usually typical of, you know, colonies that don't need light of course so yeah uh, as you pass around the corner you uh, lighting up it is comforting to see it in a bit more color through the dark vision but you see hottie um a small goblin um who is small even for a goblin she reaches about knee height but she's wearing um these long flowing green and black robes which sort of carry on behind her like a little um, wedding dress uh, as she walks over and looks straight up at you and is craning the head all the way up and says oh did you get bigger or did i get smaller again I think it's uh, just a trick of the light, and I kneel down and give her a hug. Mm-hmm. She'll give you a hug back, sort of not even managing to get her arms all the way around your neck. But you can <laughs> feel her squeeze you in a hug. And says, oh, you've been on some trip, huh? You went to uh, you went to that meeting in Eritrea? I did, I did. I have quite the news, but uh, unfortunately I have to cut the chit-chat short. I need to see Anvil immediately. A sure thing. He's, he's in his sanctum. You remember the way, right? Of course, of course I do. Uh, please let Snarl know that I'm here as well. I think that she'll be glad. Uh, yeah, sure thing. Uh, I'll, I'll let her know. Sure. It's good to and, see you. Yeah, you too. You too. I'll go get Snarl, and y- you go and see uh, Anvil. Will do. All right. And um, she scurries off around the cabin, and she, her dress just like scatters rocks around wherever she goes. It's completely inappropriate clothing for this type of terrain, but it doesn't seem to bother her at all. But she lets away into the dark and around like a small hole, which seems to only be fit for a goblin. One of those whole goblin passages here, it seems. Mm-hmm. As we walk forward and head towards the sanctum, I uh, look back to Kara. Well, I don't want to give you the full tour in this kind of pressing moment, but I will say that a uh, goblin and orc colony established here some time ago, as you may have concluded. Snarl, she's a goblin that leads the goblin half of them, and Anvil, well, he's in charge of the orcs. As much as he can be in charge of orcs, I suppose. (laughs) That's who I report to. We're typically friendly between the two of us, but uh, we do kind of keep things separate in terms of policy. When there's more time, I'd love to hear about how this all came to be. I'd love to stay the night here and bring in Pruitt and Herodotus and Yaling. (laughs) This really is a nice home. It's the only home I've ever really known. Maybe one day. Yeah, maybe one day. Passing through the cavern, you'll see several orcs gathered um, gathered around uh, lit lit campfires, the only source of light in the cave, more for heat than for for light. Uh, But you'll see several crates scattered around the edges of the cave, and the whole cave has been converted, co-opted into some kind of living space. There's several tents constructed indoors in this huge cavern that seems to exist under the mountain with several shoots of off passages in different directions. You can hear drips of water, but from where you can't really see, an indoor stream passes your path at some point, but you know where it's there and you easily step across it. Several orcs come up to you and give you a pat on the shoulder, Antigonus, but say no words. Several goblins do the same, but to your upper thigh. Um, but it's not long before you're um, approaching the where well, you know the path leads to the very secluded and often very quiet sanctum of Anvil the Bold, the leader of this colony. Uh, is the general atmosphere I'm feeling, is it worrisome, prepping for war? Is there any kind of feeling I get as I walk through? And uh, Yeah, don't check necessarily for that, really. Uh, everyone seems pretty much like they always do. Like, it's a good day here in the colony of the first. Goblins are roasting rabbits atop the uh, open fires. Uh, orcs are and engaging in idle chatter and often a bit of roughhousing, but nothing seems, no one seems to have any weapons or preparing for war or anything. Hmm. I would have uh, suspected perhaps a little bit more fanfare, considering what the message was, but 
Oh well, you can't really rein in these folks, can you? <laughs> I keep uh, walking forward to the sanctum. All right, yeah. You went to a smaller cave with a single tent, smaller tent than you've seen before um, at the very base of it. But atop that, there is a tiny cliff within the interior of the cave. And you can hear some scuffling about on top until as you enter, right next to the door, a man looks down at you from the top of the small cliff and speaks in the voice you know to belong to Anvil. Tigris, it's good some time since you've been here. <laughs> Anvil, I here to serve as I always am. I'd hoped you'd have stayed away for some time. Would I see well, you back? Eritrea, the meeting, it did not go the way that you and I thought it might. It was an attack. Another Athens, another uh, Greek city has fallen. Another Greek city has fallen. No interest in mine. I don't care for Greek cities, you know that. As Nor do I. Greek cities care for us. I see. But we do care for the living, as Prometheus would have it. Indeed. I only live to survive. Hmm. He'll sort of start letting himself down some wooden constructed steps up to this um, cliff, and um, he'll walk towards you. And Anvil's an orc, like a bit old for an orc, and he wears this sort of skull face paint, which feels black around his eyes. Um, and he holds a large black cane with a almost gold, it seems, it seems like wood, but it's gold knot at the very top, which seems to be some sort of, you know, um, big man stick, pretty much, you know. Um, for authority, but he does approach you and um, he takes a second and then he opens his arms for an embrace. Mm. I greet it very warmly. It is always a pleasure when a wayward son comes home, regardless <laughs> of the circumstances. Yes, we'll get to that in a moment. First, this is Kara. I met ah. her in Eritrea and she has been a wonderful ally and quite sympathetic to our cause thus far. Unlike you, Antigonus, to bring one of the god broken in here. Mm. I don't Look, believe she, uh, she worships the way that the others do. Is that right? Well, I trust you, and I trust her as well. Well met, Kara. Well met, Anvil. Ah, you know my name. I, I can't say. Yeah, the brief summary as we walked. Oh, good. Well... This is cause for celebration. There's much to be had, stories to be told amongst one another. I I trust you'll enjoy this for something to eat. I'd love to, yes. But of course, the celebration may be cut short. Turns out your, uh, your latest scout was captured by the Athenian troops outside. He had a map asking them to lead them to a certain outpost. Ah, you, you, you saw this in person. I did. On our way trip there, we uh, dismantled a manticore, <laughs> and uh, turns out that we saved some of these hoplites, though I did not know at the time that they were sent to eradicate the colony, as it seems is their mission. The commander led me into the tent, and I was able to translate a false story, but I'm not quite sure he bought all of it. Still, they plan to lead the hoplites here tomorrow at midday at the outpost. I'm not sure what you have planned, Anvil, but they are a strong force. Uh, you're very well informed. And you'll see his demeanor change a little as he runs his hand through what's left of his very wispy white hair on his head and he gets a bit colder, maybe, as he looks around at you and he just narrows his eyes. And what would you have me do about this, Antigonus? Tell me, how much do you care for this colony? You know that I care for this colony more than I've cared for anything in my life, save perhaps Prometheus. And you would agree that this colony is based on survival. This colony is survival. This colony yeah. is the only survival I know. Indeed. The colony is also its people, not the place. I could not agree more. And everything I do as orc chief of these people is protect and survive. Yes. No matter the cost. We must survive. Anvil, you sound different. You sound more worrisome, more at the end of your rope. I have done something. 
There is no lying to you, Antigonus. I have done something that I hoped you would not be uh, present to see. But you are owed an explanation, and I trust you will make the right decision, given time, to understand my choices. I'm an old orc, Antigonus, and I got this old as an orc by not being strong, but being wise. Wiser than any other orc, wiser than most humans. So I use this wisdom. I use it and I survive. You think you're self-gifted, but you are just a child, Antigonus. I have made sure this colony survived. I have made the hard decisions that require it. Trust in me now, as you have before. You know Kor, yes, Kor, the very hot-headed. The, well, we like to bandy the word around a lot, but the barbarian. Indeed. I know that I, you don't see eye to eye that often. Yes, she has been very difficult to deal with. We must all leave our orcish nature alone for some time. Lay low, not something as orcs are necessarily good at. <laughs> no. But core. Well, asking her to lay low, it didn't really work. She fought and she scratched and she let herself and her ideas known to the whole colony. So I have made a plan. These Athenians, they've come in force, yes? Yes, at least a couple dozen, maybe more. And they seek orcs, yes, orcs to kill, orcs to squash. They seek to crush any Titan worshiper. I'm sure they don't know as much about the goblins. They tend to be more homebodies than we are, but... Mm. And if your life had to be given, Antigonus, to stop this crushing of orcs, you would rise to the challenge, I'm sure, like a true orc would. What are you gunning for here? Mm. First, answer my question, and I will answer yours. My life has only been what it has been because of your kindness. Mm. But I do serve Prometheus before I serve any person on this planet. And that's very wise of you indeed, Antigonus. Now, Kor, I imagine, is an honorable orc. As brash as she is, she would give her life to protect the colony, to make sure that we survive. You're going to leave her as bait. I that they have eradicated the entire colony when we've only lost a few. You're very wise, Antigonus. Kor is volatile. She wants war with the god broken. The purpose she serves, giving these Athenians what they seek, will ensure the survival of the colony for many, many years to come. We cannot simply kill the Athenians. We must no, allow them to believe. What will happen after they eradicate the small sacrificial lambs that you send out? Do the, do the orcs stay underground for the rest of their lives? The moment that another one is seen, another battalion comes out. There shall be no other battalion. The Athenians will have their quarry. We, when Prometheus created humans, and we were shunned, we survived. When the god broke and shattered our temples and cast us from the cities, we survived. When they came with smoke and snarling dogs, we survived and we will survive today, Antigonus. If it costs cause life, so be it. The Athenians look for orcs. We shall give them orcs. We shall give them core, a thorn in my side, challenging my leaderships, leading us to war, a pointless, devastating war. She will die, yes. But it will be for the good of the colony. And how many others? A small, sacrificial lamb, as you say. Well, what does it matter if hundreds survive? Silence, girl, this is between orcs. Well, I just thought I'd mention that these Athenians that I've come across, they're bloodthirsty and... I don't know if they'll be satisfied with a handful of orc bodies. Where will you go? How will you avoid them in the future? 
Their satisfaction means little to me. What I mean is they'll continue to pursue you. Not if they believe they've found the colony. They will not believe there's anything left. You think they'll believe that the colony is this Korra and a handful of other orcs and that's it? I believe so, yes. Anvil, you rose my rank before I should have. You've put trust in me before to be the ambassador to Eritrea. I ask you for one moment to listen. You are owed a moment, of course. You are my friend, Antigonus. Speak as you will, but understand what has been done has been done. I would not seek necessarily to betray your plan, but you must understand the way that orc minds work. Kor has a following here. More than that, everyone in the camp knows that she is the greatest threat to your power. And they, they will be safe in the knowledge that she died fighting Athenians. Have you seen this camp? Do they look worried? They know not of my plan, only you, Antigonus. She was at a scouting party. She caught foul of some Athenian soldiers and they killed her. She went down fighting, as all good orcs do. These are the stories we tell to survive, Antigonus. And the story could easily be written that you simply found an easy way to get rid of your only threat. Huh. If this story hits the lips of anyone else in the colony, it could mean civil war. You think I fear, Kor? I do not know, but I do know this is an easy answer to a problem that's been on your side for quite some time. Hmm. Well, I believe in my plan that Kor will serve as the lamb which needs to be sacrificed, and the Athenians will return home. Satisfied with their orc blood, as always. And what is Snarl to say of this, if you discuss the plan with her? This is beyond Snarl. It is beyond everyone. If a single orc knew, well, then the plan would be defunct. I've only trusted you and Tokir, who you met at the camp. <clears throat> you are a wise commander, and I serve you. Very well. You've been to this camp. I have. You've spoken with their commander. I have. He plans to be at the outpost at midday tomorrow. Tokia is not a smart orc. He only thinks of food. You, however, Antigonus, you are gifted. Gifted as I am with wisdom beyond our racial persuasions. I do love my people, but they are not given to plans of guile, of tact. Go to this commander. Make sure he finds core. Build the idea that this was the colony. And we will survive many more years in this our home. At that, I bow and uh, take Kara by the arm and begin to walk away. And he'll uh, look silently over you as you re-enter a large open cavern, which is serves as sort of the cross-section between all other side passages of the cavern, and you will see the same orcs gathered around, all jolly laughing, all enjoying what peace they have under the mountain. Antigonus looks back and forth between them, trying to name them, trying to remember who he can, wondering who's going to be in that battalion tomorrow and who will be safe. And he tries to find another little safe spot and lead Kara toward it. And as soon as he can, he collapses to the ground and he sits against the cave, puts his head in his hands and just silently thinks. How long have you known this anvil? It's been about a year since I joined the, the colony. I always considered him to be the wise one, the not hot-headed one. I would expect something like this from Kor, of course, but not from him. That is quite the situation. You are a neutral third party. What would you do? Well, honestly, if 
blood is going to be shed regardless. What is the path to the least bloodshed? Mm. I wish he had not been so set in his mind before we came. The Eritrea plan seems so well, but he's convinced that this is his home, that they must survive. My worry is that the Athenians are smarter than he thinks, and they're not going to be satisfied with killing just a few orcs. They're looking for what they think is a colony. Well, I can plant the seed. I can uh, pretend that I've translated something from the other orc about their numbers. I don't know. I could try to sew that in, but... Oh, I've never led such people to their deaths before. This is not in my nature. How well do you know this Cora? Oh, Cora is a hot-headed... She's been vying for power since the very beginning, since I first came in. She believes in the old ways. She believes she's the Alpha. I always thought the wisdom should lead. Now I wonder. Wisdom, might, they all have their place. Well, I don't know much more to... uh to do here, I could try to speak to Snarl, but even to whisper the plan anywhere else would be to betray him. That could be dangerous. I, I need... I need a sign. I need something from Prometheus to guide me. I don't know. Communication is stifled always. You know these forests and these lands well. Could we, do the Athenians know exactly where they're going? I mean, this colony is very well hidden. It is, there's an outpost not far from here though. <laughs> Last time I was there, it was because the messenger from Eritrea had fallen ill. We took him in for a while, we nursed him back. Well, could we perhaps, I, I know there isn't a lot of time, but how far is the outpost? Could we get to the outpost and make it look like everyone there has run away? Hmm. If I had given Anvil a false time, perhaps we could, but... Lead the Greeks on a, to a cold trail that doesn't lead to the orcs? This is not the worst idea. Huh. Perhaps we could lead them to another area, not exactly this outpost. Perhaps we could... Make it seem as if there's been a flea. Right, like the orcs got word of what was happening and that they've already gone. Yes. Well, that's a better plan than anything I can think of right now. Come, let's let's venture around and see what would be possible. All right. Uh, before we leave, um, do I catch sight of... Um, Bivriv anywhere? Uh, yeah, uh, Bivriv will be around. Um, he'll be basically at one of the camps, base, uh, telling stories amongst each other. One of the more boisterous of the groups surrounding the central campfire. Hmm. I'm having a technical issue. Sorry, give me one moment. Sure. Can you hear me? Or... Okay, I can hear you now. Sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, Bivri will be one of the more boisterous orcs surrounding the central campfire of the colony, but before you can approach him, you'll hear, And who's that fine figure of an half orc I see over there? <laughs> I know that voice. Can I turn around? Yeah, it's Snarl. <laughs> Making her way over to you with a sudden swagger that is typical of her, as you've come to learn, closely followed behind at the coattails by Hottie. Are you going to leave without saying hello to your old friend Snarl, huh? <laughs> well, Snarl, I, uh, I wish that the circumstances would let me stay longer, but unfortunately, you know Anvil. He's always sending me out on errands. Oh, forget Anvil. He doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more at this moment. Uh, what'd you come back for, huh? How did it go being a hero and all? Well... It went about as well as I could expect. Uh, turns out I'm prophesied to be the hero of Greece. Wouldn't you know that, Snarl? 
Well, hell, I could have told you that any day. You didn't know it's going to go to a train to learn that. I so I've been telling people <laughs> that around here for years. Wow. Well, considering I've only known you a few months, that's impressive. Well, you know, everybody knows you're on your Prometheus' favorite son. <laughs> huh? 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 Right, Betty? Huh? <laughs> go on, show me the fire thing. I, uh, I will reach over to my um, shield and cast light on the top of it and make a little green light crackle around. See that, honey? Green fire. You can't do green fire as hard as you try. You can't <laughs> do it. Only this guy, only this bastard can do it. Only he can do it as much as I try. And you can see this intense, <laughs> that sort of complete frustration in its own now. I imagine Prometheus has many servants. Some of them he needs for fire. Some of them he needs for the gift of gab. And that would be you, Snarl. Did you just call me the gift of gab? Indeed. I thought you might think that's a compliment. That's not a compliment when you can make fire. <laughs> you make fire in our hearts, Snarl. I could never do that. Look, just stop with the fire and the hot stuff and the making gab thing. You've always <laughs> been better at stuff. Ah! It's Snarl, good to see you, though. I mean, you, you as well. Have you noticed any change in Anvil lately? Have you noticed any uh, particular difference in his demeanor? Uh, well, we we've not been talking much as of late. He's uh, he's he's holed up in his old little sanctum there. He's been casting some sort of spells. Uh, we don't tend to get too close. He doesn't mess with my side, I don't mess with his side. And if sure. you do, he knows I will put him in his place. Yes, well, I've always known who the real leader of the colony is, and I wink at her. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, don't you forget it. Mm -hmm. Where are you going now, huh? Gonna go to be a hero? Gonna go kill some monsters? Well, seems like monsters may be closer than we think. I might have to, uh... Ah, uh, you're always going out with that cryptic talk. What do you mean? <laughs> Snarl, I wonder if I could ask you a favor. Do you have any uh, any of your free goblins around that might uh, join me for a bit, just for a stroll? Yeah, you can take Hottie. Hottie's never doing anything useful. Sure, sure. Uh, Hottie, up on my back. I've got some. Uh, we've got some work to do. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah, I'll hop out on your back. And um, Hottie will just climb up the back of your armor and perch on one of your shoulders, sort of slung over it head first right well Snarl it's wonderful to see you I hope we get more time together in the near future hmm. I'm sure we will maybe you gotta teach me that fire thing next time sure I'll do my best keep praying perhaps right. and try and bring Hottie back but if she dies or something it's not a huge deal <laughs> uh, I'm getting a little too much of that lately all right all right I'll see you later man Yes. And, uh, Are there any torches or anything nearby? Generally, there's a sort of uh, campfire that's been erected in the middle of the cave, and you could take a stick from it if you wanted to. I was actually wondering if there was anything that was unlit. Oh, right. Uh, there'll be bits of wood around for fuel for the fire, yeah. I just wanted to um, look at Snarl real quick, mm -hmm. give her a little wink, and snap my fingers and use Druidcraft <laughs> to spark a little fire. All right. Okay. <laughs> And she'll look Just over. Fun. All right, now I've got you casting fire. We've got Hobby casting fire, even though I tell her not to. And we've got him casting fire. What's the point in this if we're all just going to burn down the colony anyway, huh? Do you have any <laughs> idea what fire safety is? I don't suppose you do. This is what I have to deal with with goblins every day is you don't cast fireballs in the cave. I'll remember nice that wisdom, yes. Who the remember. hell is that anyway? Ah, sorry, of course. This is Kara. She's a, a companion of mine from Eritrea. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you, too. Just don't go casting fire in our cave, please. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Mm. You're not the first, don't worry. Uh, one last thing, Snarl. I'm curious. Uh, old Chintz, I know that he's uh, probably off sleeping when he doesn't have a ritual to uh, to conduct. Could you ask him for me? Perhaps the next time I see him, I can check in. What he remembers about any undead attacks in history? Anything where the dead have risen from the ground? Uh, sure. 
Just okay. toss, him a, toss him a note for me. I'll, I'll be hey, back kids, soon. Hey, know anything about <laughs> dead soldiers? Oh, yeah, I know everything about dead soldiers. Thanks, Chance. That's how that's going to go for you. I'll try it, though. I appreciate it. All right. I, I hope to see you soon. Well, get on with you now before you get all lovey dubby. <laughs> I will uh, bend down and give her a little twink on the ear, and then I'll. Uh, yeah, it sort of switches a little, and she just sort of shies away from it, but mm -hmm. lets you go. All right. Antigonus's little smile that cracked through has now gone back to a much more dire idea as they make their way out of the out of the colony. Sure. But meanwhile, in the in the war camp, <laughs> so two hours later, uh, in the middle of what well, is probably now the night, uh, at first dark, 10 p.m., we'll say, by modern standards, the moon hangs in the sky lazily, uh, lighting up the camp with a cloudless, pale light. It's not long before the commander pulls aside the flaps of his tent and walks out at a stride, instantly spotting you, Pruid, and taking um, a walk over to you with a telltale gait, a posture, which means he shows uh, he's trying to command a great respect. I will approach him just a little bit away from my tent. Raymond Legion. Yes, what of it? And you fought in the Punic Wars. I did. I was part of the auxiliary. How fascinating. Tell me, would you ever need Greek soldiers in the auxiliary? Would they have any use of a well-prepared phalanx sword? Anything like that? No, Rome tends not to use a phalanx. A phalanx is efficient uh, when moving only forward, but Rom tends to use a strategy of surrounding and maneuverability and uh, siege weapons too, so... Ah, a, siege a weapon. technique. I've read a lot about these Roman siege weapons. You mm. tell me that you built some kind of giant bow and arrow of some kind to pierce oh, a man at 400 it. yards. Is that true? It is. I did not build it, but it is true. There is the ballista. My word, how much I'd like to have one among my own company. Perhaps you can organize such a thing if you have any old contacts. I'd be willing to pay heavy drag me for such a thing. Hmm. Relations between uh, Rome and Greece military have not been so good uh, ever since Pompey was defeated. Uh, his Greek ah. allies, you know. My friend, you can pull some strings, I'm sure, with your old legion to secure me something like that. Should you do so, I should be able to pay you quite well. If even if it's just the blueprints of such a such a such an item, such a mag magnificent construction. It would be difficult to arrange seeing the uh, difference in approach of our militaries. Uh, when Rome conquers a new area, it uh, it uh, integrates the people there. It uh, integrates the culture. It allows people to worship as they will and rise through the ranks if they wish and earn citizenship. But uh, it would seem that Greeks would use these weapons only to kill any deemed threat. I take it you've call I've caused issue with you of some kind. Well, I would only point out that uh, maybe this orc threat is not so urgent uh, if... Mm. Urgent may be the wrong word. Have these orcs killed anyone? Um, yes, is the answer to your question. I believe they have. Have they provoked the killing or was it in defense? It's hard to tell. Hmm. I would ask if you have tried to intimidate them first. That is generally also a Roman tactic. It is just as effective as battling, if not more. The clerics of Zeus in Athens do not suffer titan worshippers to live, especially those who worked in direct defiance of the Olympians. A Prometheus worshipper is a being of the past, and the Athenians are beings of the future. It mm, is a I'm afraid that uh, Rome and Greece will not see eye to eye then, and it would be very difficult to arrange the purchase of these weapons. Are you presuming that if I changed my stance on orcs, then you would be able to find me a ballista? It would be very much easier. Well, unfortunately, I cannot change how I feel for a weapon. 
Mm, it is unfortunate because Rome too has a, an attachment to its weapons. <laughs> mm, this was piquing and interested in, but he moves <laughs> past it. I'd like to speak with Herodotus, please. Oh, I'm afraid. I tried to tell you the news earlier. I was in front of your tent, but there was no answer. Herodotus, he is uh, feeble and uh, confused. Uh, he left camp with his uh, servant, the uh, red-headed woman. Uh, uh, something about getting some soup from Athens. He is uh, not so well in the head. You let him go to Athens? Well, yes, we are going to meet him later. Yes. He is with, he, again, he is with his servant, the red-headed woman. Well, I was hoping he would accompany us on the assault tomorrow. I will, yes. Uh, Herodotus, he is not fit for war. He has certain capabilities, but uh, th that is not one of them. Hmm. <laughs> Very well. Your orc is sleeping soundly, I assume. Uh, yes, he's in the tent. Hmm. Tell me, how did you come into contact with such an orc? He was one of the heroes at Eritrea. They're presenting himself, and uh, between you and me, I think he was finding a path. I'm not sure he has one. Hmm. Strange that they'd account an orc to be a hero when they've done so much harm, that is. Uh, that is another place where Roman and Greek philosophy differ. You see, when Rome conquers new territory, uh, the people there are allowed to join, to earn their citizenship through service, and rise to the ranks. I myself am not Roman by birth. I'm from Gaul, as uh, you can see. Mm. And uh, it proves to be quite beneficial. It is very easy to recruit when you are Roman. Yes, I do believe you're right. Our cultures are too different. Hmm, it would seem. Hmm, I'll try and sneak a look past you at the tent. Uh, the tent is closed, so... Yeah, I'm... yeah. <laughs> still trying it. Uh, yeah. But you know it's <laughs> if he gets close, I'll do something, but mm. if not... <laughs> Sleep soundly and prepare well. I'd hate to see an be... axe catch your face in the midst of combat, as it has mine don't want to be as ugly as me now, do you? Hmm. A man is only as ugly as his ideas. Hmm. <laughs> Take a point of inspiration. It's a cool <laughs> line. <laughs> Take 1d12 burn damage. That's good a good one. That's a good line, yeah. And he'll turn his back at this. <laughs> unable to get a final line after that and make his way back to his tent. But okay, yeah. Are you guys are making your way out of the cave with Hottie. With Hottie in tow. Okay, sure. <clears throat> it's been a while since I've been out of the cave. Uh, where, where are we going? Can I ask? Uh, if you want me to be a hero, I'll try it, but I'm not that good at casting <laughs> spells. Hottie, you've always been a hero in my heart. Oh, 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 that warms the heart. And in a good way, not in the fire way, which I tried once. It didn't work out. Yes, indeed. We're at a crossroads here. We have a mission from Anvil, which I'm not supposed to speak to others, but I do trust you, Hottie. You've always been a, a good goblin. Oh, you've got gossip? Gossip from Anvil? Indeed. Oh, uh, tell me. We're looking to make it appear as if the outpost has been fled, perhaps a few thousand feet away, as if the entire orc colony decided to flee its way north. I could use uh, some of your fire tactics, and perhaps we could make it a... Uh, it could seem like a giant movement has occurred and prevent some bloodshed tomorrow. Okay, uh, why? Well, turns out these hoplites have caught trail. They may even have a someone that'll allow them to break into the colony. We can't allow Whoa, 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 hold your horses there. I'm thinking, of, what hoplites are you talking about? Oh, I forget how sheltered you goblins are. The colony is not wanted around Athens. They believe that Titan worship is indeed... Uh, and antithetical to their very nature. Uh huh. Uh huh. And what has that got to do with the outpost? Well, tomorrow Anvil plans to lead these hoplites to a battle at the outpost. But instead, I'm going to try to prevent it. If you would help me. Well, he isn't doing a very good job of it. None of us know there's a battle going on tomorrow. Right. I believe it's only a certain group of orcs that know such a thing is occurring. Oh, typical orcs thinking they can handle the hoplites alone. We could probably take them if we worked as a group. I suppose that's a good backup plan. But first, I thought perhaps we could work for a while, see if we can make it look as if uh, an entire colony has fled. What do you say? Well, I'll give it a shot. If you think it's a good thing to do, I'm taking this. You're the thinking guy. I'm the fire guy, girl. All right. 
let's get to work. <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll head um, probably just out of eye shot of the outpost, maybe a few thousand feet um, towards the camp away from it. All right. <laughs> just start stomping on the ground and rolling around and dragging things in the dirt, all heading um, in the northward direction, making knocking over grass, making it seem like a massive 50 people have all fled. I'm um, actually going to um, kind of position myself in the direction that we want the it to look like they fleed, and I'll um, take my staff and slam it really hard down into the ground and just like this force will come out and i'm gonna cast thunder wave oh, very cool. and just That'll send the, the force out to just destroy so it looks like a large group of people has just kind of gone through yeah sure absolutely that caused a lot of uh, like uh, destruction in such an area with loose cobblestone and uh, all sorts of rocks around yeah and indeed some trees are knocked over smaller trees especially and others just have rocks embedded in them and as everything just scatters around in a black, giant dust storm how far did you say you were from the art first when you're doing this uh so that you can't quite see it so i'm guessing however it's positioned i want it to be just out of eye shot like you would be like just over this hill there's the outpost i'm trying to go a Very little well. bit before that moment Okay, well, a few moments pass after all this uh, goes on, and the sound of a thunder wave, you hear something coming up behind you, scattering the rocks. And behind you, silhouetted against the horizon, war and standing above you, atop a short cliff, um, looking up almost um, sort of crowned by the moon, you see the shape of a huge orc woman with a giant jagged axe on her back. I yell in orcish, Kor, we are friends here. You know me, Antigonus. The elf is with me. She doesn't respond, and she disappears for a moment, just turning her back on you as you call out to her. But it's not long before she passes now with you, passing around a corner uh, behind a boulder, seeming to find her way down. She just approaches you, Antigonus, eye to eye only an inch apart, narrows her eyes. I heard you'd gone to work with Godbroken, but I didn't think to believe it. <laughs> I'm full of surprises, Kor. It's good to see you again. And you? What are you doing here? Does Anvil think I'm so weak as to need backup? Well, I must admit that I'm a bit on my own here. You see, I would rather avoid a fight whatsoever. I'd rather guard and survive, keep our lives. I thought to make it look as if the colony has fled. Ah, you are weak, Antigonus. You've always been weak. You think we should hesitate to spill human blood? Would they hesitate to spill ours? And why'd you bring her with you? Cor, hi, have you hi, ever... Hi, Cor. <laughs> Cor, have you ever faced a hoplite legion 50 strong? No, and I don't expect I will. Anvil has assured us that the hoplites number no more than five, a small scouting party. It was pleasure to He's misinformed indeed. I spent time in the camp earlier today, as did Kara, my elf friend here. They are much stronger and much bigger than anticipated. Unfortunately, with the plan intact, Anvil was afraid that he could not convince you otherwise. I'm here to say this is not a fight that we can win. You're saying Anvo is misinformed. Indeed. Roll a deception check. <laughs> Ooh, 18 plus 1, 19. That's unlike Anvo. Usually he's the one with all the info. But if what well. you're saying is true, then, well, maybe we should welcome them anyway. How much fun it would be to spill human blood again, especially that soft red blood of an Athenian. Kor, I would never get in the way of you defending yourself, but I'm telling you this battle is not one that you can win. Not no. with these numbers. Please, do you think Athenians scare me? I'll take an axe to them. The same way I'll take an axe to their wine jugs, their plays, ooh, their little temples to the Olympians. 
Oh, Athenians, and nothing but soft little men, clad in useless armor. Well, if that's the case, why not storm Athens now? Why not take your legion here and go battle down their doors? Take them all down. Well, that's the smartest thing I've ever heard you say, Antigonus. Will you join me? <laughs> no. You see, I lead with my mind, not with my spear. Oh, Antigonus. My mind and not my spear. You would have us contain our nature like a viper would contain its venom, like a wolf would contain its howl. Why don't you embrace it? Why don't you do what the Greek expect us to do and fight them for what they Cor, are taking? How many orcs have you seen in your life, Cor? How many? Not enough. A hundred. Maybe. I know more. that counting is not your foray, but I suspect it's not been more than a hundred. I've seen thousands of humans, maybe even tens of thousands. Why do you think they outnumber the orcs so much? It's because they know survival better than you do. They know not to lead always with might, but other times to lead with, with craft, with the mind. They have yeah. outsurvived our species for a time. Oh, you've spent far too long amongst them, Antigonus. You who read, you who would sup at the teat of Athens, begging for the right to worship all the way out, all the while. I am here carving my piece of this world to myself. What would you have me do, build a stone city around myself? That's not survival, Antigonus. No, you're right. It's not. Which is why I would deceive them. I would lead them astray so you could have more of this land to yourself. Blah. Leave the trickery to Amber. I say we face them. You fight by me, we could obviously demolish these Athenians. I've seen how well you act in combat, Antigonus, and with your friend here, I'm sure you have others. We can end this Athenian threat here and now. Send the Athenians a message. Come to these mountains and be cleaved in twain by orcish axe. You seem to have your path carved already. I can't convince you otherwise. Hmm. What would you have me do, exactly? I would have you wait further back. Let me see if I can lead them astray. And if you can't? If I can, if I can let them go. If I cannot, fight. Fight with all you have, with every last breath. I hope you fail. But I'll I hold my men do. back until you do. Would you help me in this deception? Would you help carve this path to make it look as if we have fled, the colony has moved? But how would you expect there. me to do that? Just come over here and stomp for a while. <laughs> but I'm very good at doing that, yes. Very good, yes. Bring your men over and let's leave some footprints. That's all I ask. <laughs> this is foolish, but I will entertain it for now. If not only to get some exercise, I am so aching to stretch my arms and bones, and deeming that I've got no humans to kill, well, I guess this will do. And she leaves without a word more. I turn there. to Kara and translate everything that we just spoke in Orkish. <laughs> uh, There's no need. Yeah. Oh, good. You speak it. Oh, I didn't. Okay. Um, yeah, I get halfway through the uh, the explanation and then realize I'm just repeating myself. I just stop you in Orcish. It's okay. <laughs> ah. Everyone I meet is full of tricks, it seems. Come, we have more of a task. They'll be joining us in a moment. Let's keep going. Wow. So we try over the next, um, you said it's like 10 o'clock for the next, like, I don't know, three hours or so, so we can try to still get a night's sleep um, to make it look like this massive army of orcs has all moved. Uh, let's say at least half a mile north. Okay, that's going to take some time. Uh, roll me survival. Um, if you want to both roll an individual, or you can, or you can roll with advantage. One of you. I want to see how well you can mimic trap. Trap. Yeah, let's see to roll. Let's see to roll. Well, you sure? Okay. Survival, you said? Yeah. Oh, very bad. Really? 
Yes. I thought you'd I get good at that. I, plus six, well, when you roll a two, there's not much you can do. So, oh, no. <laughs> okay, a 21. Oh, and a no. two. All right. So, yeah, every time Antigonus makes a perfectly trodden path and it looks exactly the same, Kara comes over, kicking stuff around and, you know, <laughs> messing it all up and stuff until it's just a basic, it looks okay. A seasoned tracker will understand that it would look very unusual kinds of movements. And um, a seasoned tracker, even more seasoned tracker, would be able to tell that all of these footprints are the same person. And it doesn't make any sense. Oh, they didn't come help us? The course people didn't come help us? They will do, but um, okay, they'll only be seeing what's still nine footprints, though. Sure. Nine different okay. People. Okay, that's a start. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, as this is going on, course, course people are, um, you know, doing what they can, but they quite don't quite understand what they're doing. So they're just sort of walking around, um, hitting stuff with axes and um, rolling around in the dirt at some point. Kor herself just watching, perched upon a rock, holding her axe in one hand. As um, as we're finishing up, I turn to um, Hadi. Hadi, I have um, I have information that I will give you, and I hope that you will use it delicately. Uh huh. I'm, 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 I can do that. Anvil does not wish this battle to be won. I think that any orc support is not coming to help these nine. But perhaps Snarl will see that defending the colony is as important as anything else. Perhaps a whisper, just a, someone's loose tongue gets to Snarl. Let's her know that these orcs could have some more defense at the outpost if it's necessary. There may be nothing. But if there is, some of her best... Uh, cast her some of her best artifacts, whatever she has to help. It could help the battle. Oh. Oh, what, what do you mean Anvil doesn't want us to win? Anvil would want us to win? I think Anvil's definition of victory is different than what you or I might think. Oh. Okay, it I, could be your deaths. It could be the death of these goblins. It's up to Snarl. I cannot make this call. Well, I'll go tell Snarl for sure. Yes. Be careful, huh? I'm- you just got back, so you can't die now. <laughs> well, I don't know if I have any fate over that, but I will try. Oh, okay. I'll leave you guys to it. Uh, bye, bye, Cor. Bye, Car. Bye. It was nice to meet you. Oh, you too. Yeah. And then um, sort of scurry up in the distance. And um, strange, like she seems to know the area so well that you just blink and it seems like she's passed a rock or something and instantly just disappeared. That may be considered treason. I do not know. You're just doing the best you can to try to save your people. <laughs> well, Kor, I believe that this is enough. Follow the plan, as we stated. If they do not attack, if they lead north, let them go. Hmm. Very well. I'll not attack your precious little human friends. They are hardly our friends. They are not our friends at all. We're trying to save your life. (laughs) Well, no need to worry about me. Worry about your little humans. For I don't know if I can control my impulses. I ask that you try. I'll try. All right, uh, we have to get back to camp before anyone notices. I will see you on the morrow, and I hope it's from a distance, not doing anything. Hmm. Yes, I'll see you tomorrow. And then uh, if Kara's ready, we will head our way back to camp. Head out. All right, sure. Um, so meanwhile, um, Herodotus Prude, is there anything you're doing in camp that you'd like us to know of as it's all going on? Herodotus has probably got bored and fallen asleep. <laughs> uh, Pruitt is goes into the tent, ready to discuss some like possible plans for tomorrow. Sees her out of he's asleep and just stands watch outside the tent. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you guys making your way back to camp, right, uh, Kara and Antigonus? Yes. Yes. Yeah, stealthily as we get back in. Sure thing. I'll say that just stealthily counts. You know the patterns. It's easy enough to get back in. Um, but yeah, you'll see Pruitt outside, gunning a tent. You see several guards still on duty. Uh, but most of them seem to be um, wrapped up in some sort of blankets, um, getting some night, good night's sleep before the assault tomorrow. 
Yeah, so once we're all in the tent, I assume a summary is had of what happened. Indeed, I will give <laughs> you the rundown of what's going on. And certainly uh, look at you expectantly for some advice. The full rundown? Um, yeah, actually I will tell I will tell everything. Yeah. Okay, sure. Just to make sure. Hmm. I think the best plan is the one that you initiated. If we can trick them into thinking that these orcs went went away, I think that is the best option. To do this, I would suggest that you and I volunteer to be scouts tomorrow and we bring some of his men with us too and we convince those men that the orcs have left and we let them tell their commander that if possible if not I would just hope that we can convince one side to intimidate the other but Antigonus yeah. may I ask you a question of course if it would avoid more bloodshed, would you kill one of your own? I have some, I have some time to speak to Prometheus tonight. I would do his bidding. That's all I know. If it turns sour, I would suggest we kill this core first, and then intimidate her followers into leaving. That would be one plan. Another plan would be to take off the uh, the captain here. Take him out. Perhaps the other hoplites fall back. From what you have described, I don't think the orcs... Uh, okay, actually, scratch that. How many orcs are with Kara, uh, are with uh, Kor? About... I said eight, I think, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. From what you have described, I don't think the orcs have num the sufficient numbers to intimidate a full uh, battalion. Even if... And I am open to the option of this commander going away. But even if he did, I'm not sure that would halt the advance. Well, we'll play it by ear then. But as I said, I have to do Prometheus bidding. And I hope that he will hear my prayers tonight. Let us all hope. On the morrow we volunteer to scout. Yes. Herodotus and Kara, have any additional wisdom here? <laughs> <laughs> Unless you wake him up. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> How? It is weird. He he looks like he is listening when he sleeps, but <laughs> must be a, his a eyes habit. are open. <laughs> <laughs> eyes are open. He's I, nodding. I myself related uh, half a battle plan to him, but uh, he was asleep the whole time. <laughs> 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 yeah, he'll get you in that. He'll get you. <laughs> How likely is it really, Antigonus, that Kor will stand her ground? I think that Kor would be interested whether my idea works, but even seeing it succeed may decide that that's the perfect time to ambush from behind. I do not know. I fear that it's going to come to a point where we have to choose sides. Indeed. <sighs> I need some time alone. And I guess I'll just go to the back of the tent because I don't really <laughs> uh, I don't really want to be around the Athenian soldiers and I'll just uh <laughs> I will take some uh clay and from my bag and I will begin to sculpt it into a very large uh titan looking figure uh and once it's ready I will place it on the ground um cast light on it as it starts to burn. Okay. Close my eyes and begin to think. Um, I say, sort of under my breath, Prometheus, I, uh, I imagine that at this point you are growing back your own liver. <laughs> but if you have any sign for me of which side to choose here, any, any knowledge of what I've done, whether I've made the right or wrong choices, I would hear it. And then I open my eyes and I sort of look at the figure burning to see if it does anything. It's hard to tell whether or not it's a um, a message from the Titan himself or whether or not the clay is just um, beginning to change under the heat of the metal. But um, it's very well constructed. And you'll see the, um, the face of Prometheus 
if the mess if the metal is um not the metal the heat is sort of rising just to give the face a bit more of a lift but you're not getting more of a message than that from it i'll just keep doing that as i rest for the night so i'll check in every now and then but that's that's the rest of what i got all right sure thing uh, is anyone else doing anything over the course of the night Uh, Pro will actually be practicing something that he hasn't really done since he was a child. And if you look in the corner of the tent, he's holding a bit of fleece and different images appear where he's pointing his hand. All right, okay. What is that that he doing? Minor illusion. Ah, right, I'm, okay. I haven't enough. used it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted no, to make sure. No worries. Okay, cool. It's a gnome thing, yeah. He's a powerful <laughs> right, wizard. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah yeah so you're playing with your illusions and things so, yep. from, so yeah it's not long before either everyone drifts to sleep or um you know makes time makes the use of their time um but yeah we'll go ahead to the next morning and you'll hear soldiers going about their drills run by the large commander not the commander but the um sort of uh, lieutenant that you saw earlier in uh, the previous day um they go about their training regime um but it's not long before then until they all sit down to have some breakfast, some, um, some still some stew that was left over. Um, and is the commander having stew as well? The commander is in his tent still. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, pull uh, uh, yeah, uh, pull aside one of the soldiers and uh, you there. Does the does the battalion here always have the same scouts? Uh, we have the. We have our scouts, yes. Yes, and uh, was there any plan to send them ahead for today? Well, no, they, they, two of them died yesterday. Yes, but uh, that seems foolish. We could be walking into an ambush. would not want to do that with a full army that is immobile. I will uh, talk to the commander and uh, arrange for some scouts to be sent. I can volunteer myself, and uh, if you would recommend to me some two more men, maybe? There was really no need. The captain assures us that the orc will lead us to the outpost. They don't even know we're coming. Oh, and you trust uh, this orc that you do not know? That seems foolish. Oh. Have you have you fought with orcs before? I've fought alongside them in the auxiliary. I've never. You know their tactics. No, they never, never leave them. the side of one another. If they attack, it is in a large group. Oh wow! Um, we'll uh, persuade them. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Persuasion? Herodotus okay. will walk out of the tent okay. and go and get some breakfast. All right, sure. You're sitting down with the same, <laughs> the same people you saw the other day. Uh, they all sit down. They welcome you with a bowl. Oh, thank you. You're some sort of big shot then. Oh, am I? Well, apparently. <laughs> Captain's all in a tiz about impressing you and stuff. He never does that with anyone else. Oh. Your your captain's an ass. <laughs> uh, no, uh, uh, um, please, Herodotus, don't speak of the captain that way. He's an honourable man. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's a dirty. Bowl out expectantly. <laughs> That's a dirty twenty on the persuasion against the soldier. <laughs> right. Okay, sure. And I'll say, well, we could use more scouts, I suppose. I didn't think that it might be an ambush. Uh, yeah. Uh, can you uh, can you fetch the commander for me? I would have a brief talk with him to discuss this plan. Sure, I don't usually talk with the commander, but I I, I can try. Uh, sure, let's wait right here, um, and he'll go into the tent. And sure enough, um, he'll emerge with the commander late, um, soon after. And the commander has in his hand now a ball of water, but it seems to be coalescing in a globe around his hand. And as he exits the tent, he just squeezes it, and it pops into a sort of a showering spray before he wipes, sort of shakes his hand off, walks out. Commander, good morning. Good morning. Sleep well? I did, and I have some news. Uh, Herodotus, he is uh, he's very fickle in the mind, but uh, he returned last night. He seemed to have gathered his wits a bit, and, uh, well, he informed me of your family's reputation. I was not aware before, but... Uh, I would like to put aside our differences, and uh, I do value his opinion. So, uh, Commander, I am to understand we are marching to the outpost today. I think that is a wise plan, but 
I would suggest sending some scouts first. Uh, myself and Antigonus can go, and I would happily take along two of your men, or one or two, maybe three, but I think this would be a lot more wise than marching in head on. These orcs, they tend to... I have fought with them. They tend to be an expert in ambushes, and uh, if we could scout ahead, it would be helpful. Yes, I too want to put our uh, differences aside. Oh, please, um, indulge me, humor me, if you would. <laughs> You say Herodotus left the camp last night and returned, but by scouts I asked them and they report that they saw not a single soul leave the camp. Well, can your scouts see in the dark? Well, the they are trained to look out for things that might ambush us in the dark, and I am to be appraised of everybody who leaves or enters the camp. And Herodotus, if you'll excuse me, you don't seem like the most nimble and agile of folk. Oh, am I there? Oh, does he come over, is he? Basically, this is going on in the center of the camp. This in public, camp, yeah. You know, yeah. <clears throat> Herodotus, you tend to not draw very much attention when you enter in. It appears that none of the scouts saw you come in last night. And you say he left with this one. Oh, but I, I come here with you lot. And oh, it is one of your... Uh, it, he is very fickle in the mind. Hmm. Yes. Kara, Car about what time did you get back last night? Oh, I don't know. It was very, very late. Hmm. Yes, you say that Herodotus passes without a trace, not a lot of people notice him. But here we have this one with fiery red hair, and one of my soldiers seems to notice her quite often. I imagine he would have seen her leave. You're very, very leave. quick on uh, your feet. Kara, can you show him the way that you lead Herodotus around? She's very stealthy. Sure. Herodotus, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, okay. Are we going for a walk? Yes. <laughs> yes, we're going to go for a, a nice, quiet little walk. And I'll take Herodotus by the hand, or, like, kind of offer my arm. Hmm. And I'll go ahead and cast Pass Without a Trace, just so he can see it. Okay. It is for safety. Notice she does not leave any tracks. Most peculiar magic. Never How seen anything quite like it. An well, Herodotus like is a very special man. He needs Indeed. special protection. On that we can agree. Very well, very well. It's very peculiar that you wander around in the dead of night, but who am I to question a mind as brilliant as Herodotus? And who values soup so much, you will remember yesterday. Yes, another peculiar trait. No doubt something of a genius. <laughs> <laughs> but you wish to lead a scouting party ahead. Yes, it, it does not matter who leads, uh, but I am trained in scouting. I have 20 years of military experience to my name. Hmm. Very well. What is it to me? If it is an ambush, then you will be the ones to face the brunt of it. And we can run away. That is the purpose of scouting. Indeed. Army didn't work out slower. for our other scouts, though. Did it quite well. Our other scouts saw the enemy and were dead within minutes. There are some things out of one's control. Indeed. Well, good luck. I expect you here before the strike of midday, when we will begin our march. Okay, so Prewood is going to grab two of the... Uh, let's see, what was his name? Erebus. Um, Erebus, yeah. Erebus and one of the other people that were with us yesterday. And, and Hoplite Mook and, number two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Antigonus. And we're going to head out and scout. <laughs> <laughs> sure. What exactly are you doing as you scout? Oh, I want to head straight to this trail and just be like, oh no, all the orcs left. <laughs> oh dear. What will we do? I guess we'll head back and report. You know. Sure, yeah. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> Roll me a, I'm going to say, deception, just as to, like, as you constantly <laughs> I'm, I'm helping with this, if that matters. Yeah, go ahead and roll with advantage, then. Okay. Um, as this is going on, though, um, Erebus is just hanging out with you, Kara, like, alongside okay. of you. Like, there must have been a reason why you requested I I come with you. Uh, yes. There's hot plates to choose from, but here I am with you. Oh, uh, absolutely. Zach, do you want to roll independently, or do you want me to roll with advantage? Um, you roll with advantage, that's fine. Okay. And I also will will uh, 
put my hand on your shoulder and bless you to give you a d4 for that as well. <laughs> it's not going to help. Well, no. Oh, no. I rolled a two and a three. Oh, oh my no. god. Okay. Um, Plus four. Erebus. Guidance. Erebus. Yes. That was your name, right? It's Erebus. Yes, you remember. Yes. Yes, yes, Sarah. My name is Erebus. Of course I remember it. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm going to use my inspiration. Ah, yes! Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can use an inspiration roll on what was already an advantage roll. But it's it's separate from advantage. Is like it? luck, for example, luck is also separate from advantage if you ever take yep. that feat. Mm, yeah. Okay, I'll allow it. I think it's right. I just I don't know, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, somewhat better. That's a nine plus four for guidance, which I also rolled, plus one for charisma, so 14. Okay. All right. I'll keep that in mind. Um, At least it's an absolute fail. (laughs) Back to the conversation. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, What were you saying? Sorry, Carathon. Oh, yeah. So, Erebus, yes, we we chose you because you were so good in the battle against the Manticore. I know. Did you see me? I was like, and the Manticore was like, oh, and I I slid it. I oh, it was as well to protect. Quite impressive. Yes, I, I'm I, grateful that you were there. I'm sure you saw I stayed well away from the battle. Mm, of course, such is the. Um, of course, you, you do want to harm your beauty, <laughs> is what I'm saying. It's. I'm sure you're very powerful in battle. You're very wise to stay back. I can protect you if, if you need me to. <laughs> oh well, I'm I'm glad to hear that. You see, I really, really hate to see bloodshed. I I hate all of that you know it's so much better if we could just peacefully get along don't you oh, think of course you know i i i don't i share the commander's hatred for all because I, I want to make good good because ne- neither do i neither do i and i i think it's in our best interest if we don't have to battle any orcs at all well yes i definitely think most of the soldiers are on your side in that regard well oh good good i great so as we, we scout, you're scouting, right? You're going with the scouting party? Well, I'm with you now. We're yes, scouting yes. for you. Okay. Well, look, I mean, does it look like there's any orcs around here? Well, your friend seems like quite the incompetent tracker, so I can't really get a good read. I mean, I'd oh, rather... You're, you seem like you're very smart with these kinds of things, though. What well, do you... Yes, I am. Oh, well, if I take a look, let me see. And um, he'll just, like, push you a little aside through it. Mm-hmm. Are, are we already out? I, I'm a little confused. Yes, yeah, so are we still at camp? Basically, like um, this was all going on, as you said, like you're trying to pretend as to we be, traveled. Yeah, like no, okay. you're already there at the um, the side oh. of the thing. Yeah, okay, yeah, like, at the side around. of the tracks. Cool. Yeah, sure. Um, so he pulled me aside, and yeah. he's looking down at the tracks himself, and he's going to roll a survival to see what he can tell. Okay. Um, it's it's going to be a natural t- twenty. He's not particularly good at survival. Hope not. Oh, it's, uh, dear God. The 22. Of course. Mm. I'm say. <laughs> Can I give him disadvantage because I'm like uh, right to his side, just like pointing stuff out? Yeah, okay. I already rolled the disadvantage. You rolled the 20 on disadvantage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> dang it. He's a, he's a decent scout, Erebus. Looks around just strange, strange tracks. It's almost as though they're gathering something back and forth. Some tracks are going back in that direction to make much sense. I assume we found some sort of through passage. No, I'm not the only one seeing this. No, I think I think you're right. Very when impressive, orcs... Erebus. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> when when orcs leave, they uh, they're not very organized. Have you ever seen an orc charge? It's not uh, it's nothing like the Greek or the Romans. They uh, well, and they m- probably... might have been a tussle among them even. They might have been, you know gathering gear and going back and forth as they were taking things, you know? I mean, that makes sense to me. I have another idea, too. Yes, yes. What if what if the majority of the orcs wanted to leave, but a select few wanted to stay and there was a bit of a tussle before they left? I mean, clearly the tracks go very far. Look here. There seems to be remnants of, of magic in the in the grass as well. Some Some little sparks, some fire, some flame, some char. There was a scuffle here before they started to leave. Yes, that, that kind of makes sense. That, you also How smart of you to figure that out, Erebus. Oh, thank you, yes. Thank you. <laughs> You're probably right then, if Kara so, yes. Um, yes. She seems to be very smart, the smartest among the party. Um, yes, well, good, good. Well, then you can report to the captain that all the orcs have left. I don't know if it's true. Oh, I'm sure it is. Not. I'm sure you're right. 
Orcs are never by themselves. They always travel in groups. They attack as one. That is why it is very dangerous to approach them. And what if the you will be overwhelmed. Turn? His turncoat wouldn't be leading us to an empty cave. What would be the point? His turncoat probably doesn't have up-to-date information. That couldn't be the case, Kyrie. You're so smart. After all, they did have a tussle. Who knows if this turncoat was on their side or not? Hmm. He does have no reason for betraying them. I always found that pretty strange. What does an orc want? Gold? We don't have any tracking for him. What would you do with it anyway? Buy more bones? Uh, no offense. I, I don't hate orcs. I, the captain's prejudice is infectious. You must miss If I had to guess, I would say that orc that we met might have been on the losing side of this tussle. Hmm. That would make sense, yes. And he fled to the camp to try and get revenge by leading the Athenians to the victor. Eretus, you're a genius. I, I didn't even think of that. Well, you're probably right, but the orcs are probably long gone by now. That's Indeed. true, yes. But I think I've cracked it. I think I've got the idea, yes. I've done it. I, there was a tussle here. The orc lost, and in a fit of rage, in orcish fury, he ran to the campment that he knew was there, looking for the orcs, and sacrificed his honor to lead us to his colony and have us wipe them out. Oh, exactly. Drat, I was looking forward to a fight. How awful. But I suppose it would be a brave soul that that tells this to the commander. The commander would probably, might even promote, I don't know. Huh. Oh, I myself went uh, from a scavenger to an official scout on a similar situation. Hmm. Yeah. Perhaps I'm due for a promotion. Oh, <laughs> I certainly uh, think so. You the Mandico yes. yesterday and this uh, investigative work today mm, is very good work. Well, Even a Roman would be impressed. Oh, well, what can I say? <laughs> it's uh, really uh, nothing really that bad. It's just some simple no, tracking uh, and um, detection. Mm-hmm. I wasn't quite sure myself, but now I'm convinced you've you've solved it. I, b- I believe it. Well, that's fantastic. And uh, Caro, do you think the same? Oh, absolutely. I think you have figured this all out. I'm very impressed. Oh, well, if, if you'd like, I can um, I can show you in Athens how far my career will go. Oh. In the background, they're taking this. I look like, forward <laughs> to it. We are in Athens. <laughs> well, I mean, when you're in Athens, you must find me. Uh, I, uh, I'm in the Puddle District, but it's, it's, it's a meager establishment, but as we know, my career is headed in great direction so. oh yes i i think you're due for a promotion very shortly I'll, I'll certainly look you up when we're in athens i so much look forward to that yes thank you kari yes so right let's go and tell the commander let's do all right let's do let's head out. and just just to clarify harry Pruitt would have taken at least two of them so it doesn't seem that commander too suspicious yeah know? the other guys that is looking at their of us like he's a weirdo but um mm-hmm. and they, <laughs> But he's not an accomplished tracker like Erebus. Yeah. I'm and I, I'm just gonna on the way back, I'm just gonna talk to both of them and just reiterate how man we are so lucky that the orcs left because have I fought with orcs and they are dangerous and uh-huh. yada yada yada. And if we ever did fight orcs, you gotta be careful not to break formation because that'll just make them mad. You know, just got to stick back and try and intimidate them, you know, and stuff like that. <laughs> Very well. Roll me a persuasion check if you guys go along. Just sure. for my curiosity. See how... Uh, the last... Finally, 17. Mm. <laughs> Tend to echo your sentiment that fighting orcs in any regard should be avoided if that's possible. So, yeah. Definitely. Go ahead and take it up. In the last moment before we leave, I, I sort of take a gaze up to the cliff um, and just sort of see whether or not Core is watching. Uh, make a perception check. Uh, ooh, nat 20 plus 1, 21. Nice. Core, Core is not watching. Okay. But Anvil is. Watching down. <laughs> with a vulture on his shoulder. You can just see him all back, <laughs> with almost back against the tree. You'd miss him at first in his brown robes, but looking back, you see that school face cast, like, casting a white image against an otherwise more mundane colored background. Can't tell its expression from there, but no other orc puts such a sharp image in Anvil. Although old, still holds that very powerful look about himself. It seems that he had intentions of watching this all unfold. And it seems to have gone against him. 
All right. Well, with that knowledge, I uh, get back on the horse and start heading towards camp. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's an easy ride back down to camp, and you'll see people beginning to make regiment to build what looks to be a marching order of um, two rows of 12 men. So uh, uh, once we get back to camp, Pruitt is going to look like he's upset, like he wanted to fight, but it didn't get it, <laughs> so that it doesn't look like he's motivated to deceive anyone that these guys left. Mm -hmm. Very well. Um, yeah, sure. You can look like that all you want. And um, the commander is out front, and he'll greet you first, Pruitt. And say, mm -hmm. uh, find anything? You don't look too, too satisfied. What's happening? Uh, I'll be honest. I was looking forward to a fight. I've been in retirement too long. Tell him, Aramis, uh, Aramis? <laughs> Aramis. Tell, uh, tell him, Aramis, what we found. Uh, he's right, Commander. The orcs, they're long gone. Perhaps two days gone. Uh, many, many have traveled. Um, Kara here can reiterate how adept I was in my deductions. I, I, I can swear by it. Hand on heart. By Zeus, I swear it. Isn't that right, Kara? Yes, I mean, you seem to be a very accomplished scout. I am very accomplished scout. If nothing today has proved that, we can all agree. Even Herodotus. I am a very accomplished scout, right, Herodotus? Oh, 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 yes. <laughs> I dare say one of the most accomplished in all of Greece by this point. Perhaps one day I shall leave the scouts. Perhaps I am Artemis' chosen. But so many time will time. And he'll just Perhaps. Keep his eyes just keep darting towards you, Kara, as he sort of pontificates on his own grandeur. <laughs> okay, what's what's the commander's reaction? What visual cues are we getting? <laughs> Did someone knock him on the head? Regardless of what you saw, we will go ahead as planned. I won't believe until I see with my own eyes. I didn't travel out here just to let scouts do the work. If there's nothing to be worrying about, then we have nothing to fear. No, by all means, but... Uh... I would advise keeping information, keeping back, and uh, looking at these tracks yourself. We can direct you right to where they are. I would not advise a, um, <clears throat> a um, how do you put it, a reckless charge forward. I would advise still safety in numbers and gradually approach this area and see what there is. Indeed. With only no. a couple of days gone, you may be able to catch up to them very quickly. Yeah. Mm. I don't suppose we can match an ox pace in the mountains, but... Noted, indeed. Very well, form up, if you wish to accompany us. The orc shall lead the way, not you, Antigonus. This this other one here, his name I still struggle to pronounce. Toku, Toku, Tokia, what, what, what's his name? Uh, Commander, if you wish, when we get close, I, I can personally escort you to the area that we found the tracks. Uh, it is not necessary, of course, but uh, it would, would be faster once the army is closer. Noted, very well. Well, let's make haste. Onwards, men. And um, with that, the large man who greeted you in the first place has the orc by the shoulder, not restrained, but just urging him onwards. And the orc indeed um, looks to you, Antigonus, as though he knows you've been to Anvil. But he does not know the result. As he comes by me, as he comes by me, I will whisper to him in orcish, Anvil has changed his plan. We will lead them north of the outpost where they will be ambushed, far, far north, a few miles. Noted. Go north. Yes, and then you'll see the tracks. Roll A at the section check. Not great. Six plus one, seven. Seven. Anvil never changes his plans. I'll go where I've been told, the outpost. <sighs> and uh, he starts leading before you get another word in, and the hot fights follow. Only the commander atop a horse, whose horse who's struggled to get up the um up the rocky path do you manage over the course of the next hour an hour and a half maybe with so many people to reach the outpost is there anything anyone wants to be doing in that travel time without overplaying it pray what will try and steer them to further from the outpost where there are tracks sure you can try but they are following the orc at this point literally where he is leading is where they mm -hmm. go they're not looking for tracks anymore. They're following 
his footsteps towards this outpost. Mm -hmm. So you reach a small cave. It doesn't look like anything more than just a rocky hollow in the side of the mountain. But the orc nods up the ridge. And um, he'll say something in orcish, at which point you're beckoned forward to the front of the line, Antigonus. What's he saying? No. I don't know. Tell him to repeat himself. I said the leader of the orcs is in that cave. Kill her, and you'll have your prize. And he'll look to Antigonus and give the nod, saying that this is it. He says he doesn't see any sign of what's supposed to be here. He says that perhaps they left without him. Hmm. Interesting. Well, if he's pointing to this cave, I suppose it to be the place. Let's send some men in and see if there's anything wrong. Let's see if there's anything present. I place my hand on the captain's shoulder and I say, I'm not so sure I can trust him. He's changed his demeanor from yesterday. It could be an ambush for your men. Hmm. You think so? You were so sure there was no ambush yesterday? I was, and now at this moment I'm not so sure. I do believe these tracks we saw earlier may be leading to something, but I suspect maybe a civil war between the tribes. You know how raucous and unruly they can be. Oh, yes, I'm glad well. Believe me. If he's leading you away from these tracks, I think that perhaps that's the trap. I think the tracks are where you should be going. Hmm. Roll up a in the chat. Good one. 17 plus 1, 18. Okay. <sighs> it's very likely that the orc is leading us to a trap. Very well, men, follow the tracks northwards. Erebus, you go and check in that cave. I feel it a shame to come this far without sending at least one person to see at least if the orcs have even been here. Or if with whole orc fiasco, this orc has led us on a wild goose chase. Uh, I, I, yes, sir. I, I am a very accomplished tracker, so I will be able to see the estimate of the situation. I will accompany you, Aramis. Aramis. All right. As will I. I'll Just go as well. All right. On your head's beard, if it an, is an ambush, may the gods protect around. each and every one. Oh, what should I do? Well, Herodotus, I wouldn't suspect you'd like to risk your neck in a trap. I, I already have reservations about your being here in the first place. You best stick with me. That seems like a good plan. Oh, okay. Pretty well. And then he'll just give his horse a slight tug on the reins, and the main contingent of the um, hot flights begin heading towards the tracks rather than the cave. Okay. Prowit is heading first into the cave. How big is the cave around? Um, it's like the size of a small, um, like a hmm, like a circus tent type set. It's quite cavernous. Are the there any narrow parts? No, it seems to be one big room this, but you can see that there are tents and used campfire and discarded meat just all the way scattered around. Can I see all the edges of the cave, or does it go on yeah, anywhere? You can see the edges, all the edges of the cave. Yeah, it doesn't seem occupied. No. Okay. And Ooh. I, yeah, and I make <laughs> sure that uh, I'm very visible up front. And as we get away from uh, earshot from the uh, from the rest of the army, I will put my hand on Aramis's shoulder and cast command. Oh, okay. Sure. What's that for me? Uh, that is a command. Command. Oh, you better have uh, a wisdom save. Um, Command is a wisdom, 14 save, yeah. All right, let me get his sheet up. Wisdom. <sighs> no! Dean. What are you... What? What are you doing? You had something on your shoulder, pal. I wanted to just make sure you looked your nicest when you get your promotion later. No. What are you doing? Why have you Nervous. tried... This What's is, going on? This is incredibly important. What do you mean? Why are you trying to cast spells on me? I thought we were friends. What What's happening? We're trying to save lives. What Is that lives? What you want? I want to All find our lives. Explain yourselves. 
Eremus, we did not tell you earlier because of the other hoplite that was with us, but these orcs, they have no fighters with them. They are innocent, and we are trying to defend them. Now that we are alone with you, we can come to terms with that, but we could not before. I... This makes no sense. What? Where does the commander know? No, the, the orcs really did flee, but... We are trying to avoid bloodshed because they have no warriors that we know of. The tracks were real. You really did find those those tracks. But we are trying to avoid... We do not know if there are any remaining in this cave. It appears that there are not, but we did not know for certain. But why are you trying to cast spells on me? I found that it may be easier to just convince you to send a message than to actually argue with you here, but I was wrong. Ara has told me that you are wise and that you were quite keen in these things. I should have trusted her. I apologize. Antigonus have spells. One, because you can't just go cast the spells without at least one roll check. Roll me that deception <laughs> roll once again. 19 plus 120. Um, <laughs> in the future, just ask me, okay? It's no need we to would have, Aramis, but spells. we were with the other hoplite then. But I yes, we should have trusted you. You're right. We should have. Kara, you're right. He's, he's Erebus, the best of them. Forgive him. He's he's not as smart as you are. Yes, I'm beginning to see that. At least you understand me, Kara. I do, and and I hope that you understand me as well, and that I just... These orcs, they're, they're families... Indeed. And Kara, and he'll just approach you and he'll touch your cheek. Oh God. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sense there's something special between us. Don't you fear it too? <laughs> yes. <It's> like... <laughs> Roll deception, Kara. It's gonna be terrible. <laughs> with, with advantage, because he wants desperately to believe it. <laughs> Oh, oh, not terrible. Okay, 16 on the dice, so 15. Okay, oh, right, you're minus one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll say, with his pure eagerness to believe this, he'll just say, ah, good. Well, that that's good. And maybe we can explore that further once we're in Athens. Shalalalala, don't be scared. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> and he'll say, well, very well. I, I am very happy with how this is played out. I knew I could count on you. Yes, always, always, of course. Aramis, what is your fam? Uh, what, where does your family stay in Athens? We will be sure to visit. Oh God! <laughs> is that an intimidation role? <laughs> like... No, it's like it's it like we are like going to follow up. Like, you know. <laughs> are you going to meet kids? Erebus? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it Where's like that. Where's your I mean, yeah. I actually am proficient in intimidation thanks to my background, right, so it enough. would be better than other charisma checks. Yeah. I'll say, well, my father yeah. died in the Trojan Wars, but my mother's still in Athens. Yeah, and we don't have to role play the whole conversation, but just yeah, making right. it seem like we're fully invested in being his friend and gotcha, visiting gotcha. his family. 100%. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you definitely Evil know. bastards, a lot of you. <laughs> Poor Erebus. I, Poor this Erebus. is definitely the the session where Pro has lied like more times than ever in his whole life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Very well. All right. Uh, what are you guys doing? Back to the command and uh, to are deliver there, the message. Are there any people in the cave? I mean, just to make sure. No, there's nobody in the cave. Okay. There is, however, cool. someone in the entrance of the cave. Oh. Yeah. Sure enough. With your backs now against the wall, you'll see as you turn the very telltale figure silhouetted against the bright sun behind him. You can see no features other than the black outline of Anvil as he stands there in the cave entrance. He doesn't say anything as he looks to each one of you. Resting his eyes on Kara first and then Antigonus. Anvil, you promoted me to be one of your advisors, and earlier you had made a decision which I was not privy to. I serve you, I serve the colony, and I attempted to do what you have asked me to do from the moment I arrived, to be wise, to prevent the loss of life. 
and to make the colony survive. This is what I've attempted to do today. I understand it is against your order, but perhaps your order allowed for this new opportunity. I hope you understand my decision. I understand perfectly. But now we have the orcs still alive, no Athenian prize, and Kor still lives. Kor does live. And to be honest, she showed more wisdom and more restraint in the past day than I've seen at any point in time. Perhaps you were rubbing off on her anvil. Kor will lead us to ruin. The blood and it will be our job to stop this. I am disappointed in your antagonist. One day I was to pass this mantle to you, but now I see you're not ready to make the decisions necessary to protect us. You think it will be the first time that I'd sacrifice one to save many? You think I take pleasure in cause death? No, I hope you do not. But I if there is a way to save all lives, perhaps this is the wiser plan. Be gone from this mountain. I don't wish to see you anyone to this. This would have been all I need to worry about for so many years. We could have kept the Greeks away without a prize. They would be back and they would find us. And when you come across us, when you return to this colony of bones and blood, and you see all the bodies of those that you've let die, I hope you realize then the importance of hard decisions. I have another, one last shred of wisdom for you, Anvil, before I take my leave, my banishment. There is a Greek city abandoned not far from here, two days travel, three at the most, Eritrea. The orcs could find home there with the goblins as well. It is established, it has shelter, it has fortresses. It is completely empty except for a few cats. <laughs> you can find solace here. You do not need to spend your time in the caves and the caverns again. This can be the home of the colony. This I give you as an option. Establish yourself there. Let the Greeks deal with you later, but this can be your way out. Goodbye, Antigonus. Farewell, May Prometheus friend. guide you. And also you. And he will um, begin to sort of smoke up from around his feet. But it's more, it turns out not to be smoke of very fine feathers as they begin to encompass him and spread all the way up his legs, his robe all starting to pour into feathers until it, it sort of collapses under its own weight, this pile of feathers, and what's left is just a, a single vulture, which gives you one last tweak of its head, and then starts flapping its wings, its bony carrion wings, and taking off into the sky. I do not know if I've made the right decision. Well, that's where we will end today's session <laughs> and get back to that next time on Pantheon. Woo, Pantheon, everybody! <laughs>